honor our 2021 graduating seniors at this time. We're going to start with the cheerleaders. I'd like to introduce Ms. Reagan ba Beaver. Uh, she is the daughter of Dave and Kelly Shagwa and Ryan and Jessica Beaver. Her favorite football memory is early morning car rides with Abby, Kate, and Jasmine, cheering on my little brother, the Drupal, all of Nikki's ridiculous moments, the team putting up with all my spaz attacks. Her future plans uh, include to go to school to be a physician assistant, move far away from Warren County, get married, and have a few kids and live in a big house. Her advice to the younger members of the cheerleading squad, listen to your upperclassmen and captains because they probably know what they're talking about. Be funny. It gets you everywhere in life. And always remember, stay classy, Eisenhower. Congratulations, Reagan. Our next senior cheerleader is Mia Johnson. Her parents are Adam and Jody Johnson. Her favorite football memory is making TikToks on the stairwell. Are you freaking kidding me? Senior road trip, you're a senior, making me feel welcomed. Her future plans include to graduate high school, go to college for dentistry, get married, have a lot of kids, and live a happy life. Her advice to the younger members on the squad, listen to the coaches, don't sing the cheers, have fun and smile. Congratulations, Mia. Our next graduating senior, senior is Miss Morgan Kellogg. She is the daughter of Shane and Tara Kellogg. Her favorite football memory, it has not been that way. Cheering alongside my big sister, Pukey Poo, family bonding with Jasmine and Alex, chicken wing dip from the crock pot, Susan's chili, that one bus ride to playoffs, and get in the cooter, Jordan. Her future plans include to graduate high school, go to college for music education, find a job somewhere, and settle down with the love of her life and a few dogs. Her advice, don't drink the water. Wear your mask above your nose. If it feels weird, you are doing it right. Sue has all the requirements to be a cheer coach and love every second of it. Congratulations, Morgan. Our next graduating senior is Ms. Alex Pascuzzi. She is the daughter of Rich Pascuzzi and Diana McDonald. Her favorite football memories include Get in the Cooter Jordan, Sue's Chili, family bonding with Morgan and Jasmine, I got it, breaking my ankle catching one of my flyers, decorating the halls, watching my sister cheer, cheering on my little brother, and Friday night lights with the best second family a girl could imagine. Her future plans include to go to college for something in the medical field, find some lucky guy to fall in love with, eventually have a few kids and a cute dog. Her advice to the members on the squad, if you feel like you look silly, you are doing it right. Never be afraid to be yourself. We never become what we want by remaining what we are. Step out of your comfort zone, try new things. You never know where it could lead you. Congratulations, Alex. Our last graduating senior is Miss Jasmine Punch. Her parent is Jenny Punch. Her favorite football memory, family bonding with Alex and Morgie. YMCA adventures with Abby. It does not bend that way. Get in the cooter, Jordan. Car rides with Nikki. Senior road trips. Shoving Morgie's crap ankle in the air. Ranting with MB. Friday night lights with my second family. Her future plans include, uh, she's undecided. All I know is I want to make a ton of money and travel the world. Her advice, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen more and talk less. Fake it till you make it, and never let your teammates know you have Dr. Pepper. It will be gone before you get any. And lastly, cherish every moment. Congratulations, Jasmine. <laughs> now like to celebrate our graduating senior football players mr colby hag number one he is the son of darren hag his favorite football memories include cookie cake moon guide the cambridge springs comeback 
quick time at Owens, Thursday night adventures, blasting music at Northeast, and pregame at Hags. His future plans include to move out of Warren, start a fishing career, make some millions, settle down in a nice house, maybe have a kid or two, and live a happy life. His advice to the younger players, don't drink the water. High school goes by way too fast to not show up at every play. Congratulations, Mr. Hag. Our next graduating senior is number nine, Mr. Zane Alexander. He is the son of Wendy and Matt Alexander. His favorite football memories include Cambridge Springs Comeback, Hag's Haircuts, The Moon Guide, Beers Playing in Sneakers, Cookie Cake, Pizza Hut with Hagberg, Creek Drive, Lindlings, Soap Soccer, Kale versus Coach O'Brien, Blue Gold Fade, Hag's Potty Breaks, Cup Putt, A Rob Leveled by Penley, Lundy tossing ball into the weeds, and Hag scores. His future plans include to go to college and major in bioengineering, get a job that will make him filthy rich, and then make millions betting the ponies and retire in the tropics. His advice, four years goes by in an instant, so don't take a single play for granted, and don't drink the water. The next senior is number 11, Trevor Walker. <laughs> Trevor is the son of Colby and Michelle Walker. His favorite football memories include Hag's haircuts, the Cambridge Springs comeback, and Iroquois senior year. His future plans include to move to Tennessee, find a nice girl to settle down with, and raise a couple kids. His advice, don't take everything so serious or you will never live life to the fullest. Congratulations, Trevor. Our next senior is number 15, Owen Trumbull. He is the son of Mark and Wendy Trumbull. His favorite football memories include Hacks Cuts, WWE Smackdown, Kale versus Coach O'Brien, Hacks Potty Accidents, A Rob Leveled by Coach Penley, Thursdays at Pizza Hut, Beers Playing in His Sneakers, Zone Pros, Lundy versus Jeremy Carter, Cambridge Comeback, Colton Swan Dive. His future plans go to the NFL, win a Super Bowl, make millions, hunt turkeys all over America get his PGA Tour card and sit among the ranks of Arnold Palmer, find a nice house in Warren County and then start his life. His advice today, give all that you have for what you keep inside, you lose forever. Oh, uh, don't drink the water. Congratulations, Owen. <laughs> Next senior is Darren Glotz. He is the son of Ron and Sandy Glotz. His favorite football memory the Iroquois football game. His advice to the younger players, if you work hard, you can achieve anything. Congratulations, Darren. <laughs> Our next senior is number 22, Caleb Robinault. He is the son of Daryl and Amy Robinault. His favorite football memories include Hag's House, Come back against Cambridge Springs, my game-winning touchdown against Cochranton, bus rides with the boys, singing to Veneta on the bus, and Friday nights. His future plans include to join the National Guard, go to college, find a job, settle down with the love of his life, and maybe have a couple kiddos. His advice, take every opportunity you get, make every mistake at 100 miles per hour, Practice every day like you are playing a championship and life's a garden. Dig it. Congratulations, Caleb. <laughs> Our next senior is number 28, Dylan Benson. He is the son of Ron Benson and Stephanie McChesney. His favorite football men memories include Brawl at Sheffield freshman year, come back against Cambridge Springs his junior year, coming a long way together with this group of seniors. 
His future plans are to go to college and play football, graduate, get a good paying job, settle down with the girl of his dreams and have a beautiful house. His advice to never stop grinding and enjoy every moment you have because your whole high school experience will be over very shortly. Congratulations, Dylan. Our next graduating senior is number 54, Jared Beers. He is the son of Jeff and Amy Beers. His favorite football memories include playing two games with a broken hand. Hag's House, the Cambridge game, Cookie Cake, never blocking for Owen, and playing in his sneakers. His future plans include to go to college majoring in Homeland Security and find a job that he will love and make some serious cash. His advice to the younger players, run through the line and do not drink the water. Congratulations, Jared. Number 59, Mr. Logan Abbott. He is the son of Chad and Linda Abbott. Logan's favorite football memories include fun with the boys, being under the lights, practices, and bus rides. His future plans include to get a seven to three job doing something simple. His advice, don't drink from the water hose and do your best. Congratulations, Logan. Our next senior is Mr. Brody Porter. He is the son of Ron and Laura Porter. His favorite football memories include Cochranton Comeback, Hershey Squirts, Hags Cuts, watching Coach O'Brien slam Kale, bus ride home from destroying Iroquois and blocking a punt to let us win against Cochranton. His future plans are to go to a lineman school in Erie, move out west, settle down in a small town, and start a small family. His advice to the younger players, always listen to your coaches, don't drink the water, and don't forget to keep on rocking in the free world. Congratulations, Brody. Our last senior tonight is number 75, Justin Hammy Hamilton. His parents are Patrick and Andy Hamilton. His favorite football memory, team bonding, getting leveled by Joe Bauer, Friday nights at Farrell's and playing Mario Kart, Friday night lights on the pasture of pain. His future plans include to go into the workforce of welding, to settle down with a beautiful girl and have a family. Justin's advice to the younger players, always work hard and get the job done. Give all of your effort towards everything you do. Listen to your coaches. They only want you to do your best. Congratulations, Hammy. Keep those back and forth. That concludes our celebration. <laughs> if you could give this uh, outstanding group of seniors another round of applause. Thank you so much for representing Eisenhower the way that you have. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this D9 and 10 Sports.com broadcast of District 10 football, where tonight the Eisenhower Knights welcome the Seneca Bobcats in a Region 5 contest. This is the Rehab Center pregame show. I'm Brian Hagberg here with Cody Elms at Eisenhower High School for D9 and 10 Sports.com. And yes, we did say we were at Eisenhower High School tonight, Cody. Uh, this game was originally scheduled to be played at Seneca. Uh, they're undergoing some field renovations. Uh, the field turf is not ready yet, so. 
they flipped the games, and tonight's contest is here at Eisenhower. And uh, Cody, tonight it's a tale of two teams uh, this evening. That's right, Brian. The Bobcats have struggled right out of the gate under the first-year head coach Don Eisenhower. Uh, he, 29-year-old coach, he played at Ed Edinburgh collegiately. Took over for Scott Bellheimer, who uh, went winless for two seasons prior to this. Uh, Einhaus, they're 0-2 after falling to Iroquois in week one and Union City last week. Eisenhower, on the other hand, has been firing on all cylinders. The Knights have outscored their opponents 102-6. to Take a minute to go over some of the Eisenhower stats. Um, week one, they beat Union City 47-0. Trumbull had 164 yards and two touchdowns and, with also two interceptions. Kale Black had 11 carries and 104 yards in that game. Trumbull and Black went on week two against Iroquois. Trumbull had 203 yards and two touchdowns. And Black had 10 carries for 46 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah and you know, Cody, I, I mean, Eisenhower's been firing, like you said, on all cylinders offensively. Um, Seneca's been able to get some things going offensively as well, even in those losses. Uh, they're coming in averaging 26 points a game, but they've dug themselves some holes as they're giving up 46 and a half per game. Yeah, they lost week one 55-30 to Iroquois, 38-22 to Union City. Uh, really the only highlights offensively that Seneca has is Ryan Miller uh, last week ran for uh, 137 yards and, and a touchdown. And Colin Libra threw for 150 yards and a touchdown. And we pause now for the national anthem. That was the Eisenhower Knights marching band with tonight's national anthem. Again, you are listening to the Rehab Center pregame show. The Rehab Center, with six conveniently located offices, including Brookville, Clarion, and Catanning, the Rehab Centers offer a range of chiropractic and rehabilitation treatments. Call them today for an appointment at 724-478-1501. One number gets you into any of those six offices. And like them on Facebook as well. That's the Rehab Center, spelled the old English way, with an R-E at the end. Our game stream tonight is brought to you by the Computer Guru of Leaper. When you need computer repairs or service, call the Computer Guru of Leaper at 814-744-7580. And tonight's drive to the game is brought to you by Warren Tire Center. For all your automotive needs, look no further than Warren Tire Center. From new tire to tire repairs, state inspections, wheel alignments and auto detailing, and so much more. There's no reason to go anywhere but Warren Tire Center in Warren, PA. With over 40 years serving Warren and surrounding communities, it's always a great day at Warren Tire right, Center. Boss, here we go. We had the toss earlier, Seneca won the toss, okay. they've elected to receive. Okay, and we did have a coin toss, tonight, Seneca's won the toss, Benman. they have elected to receive. Jake Venman getting set to kick for Lights Eisenhower. Contest tonight. Uh, and right now, Cody, let's, the Bucket Cafe brings you Cody's keys to the game. Well, I think the key to the game since Seneca's going to be starting with the ball, we'll start with them. 
so uh, we'll offensively, they, they're a little outsized, but they have the ability to utilize their speed. And then with Eisenhower defensively, they got to contain Seneca. That's going to be a key to them being Here's able to kick control this game. Right. Squib kick again by Venman. Uh, Seneca tried to field it. That was Tyler Randall. Initially got it, bounced off his hands, but I think it was either him or uh, number 52, Ed Butterfield, who fell on it. Either way, Seneca recovers. They will start first and 10 at their own 34 yard line. And tonight's first quarter is brought to you by BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove. Looking to outfit your team with a quick turnaround time? Then give BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove a try. At BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove, we believe businesses, individuals, and teams should be able to represent themselves at a reasonable price. We have access to thousands of different products. And give us a call at 814-849-7325. Okay, that's Colin Lieber, the quarterback, on the rollout. It looks like he got tackled in the backfield by Beers, a loss of about two on the play. So that'll bring up a second and 12 from the 31. Okay, so second and 12 now for Seneca on their own 31 number six Colin Libra at quarterback he's in the gun looking to pass and he throws quickly out to Anthony Buscemi uh, Buscemi was unable to hold on to that little screen pass and that will bring up a third and 12 and when you're backed up call Luton's plumbing heating and air conditioning to get you moving again this third and long is brought to you by Luton plumbing heating and air conditioning Well, one of the points of infinite emphasis was the defense, and Eisenhower's already being disruptive here on the first series for the Bobcats. Yeah, Libra in the gun. <coughs> and he'll give, he'll give snap. off to uh, number 30, Ryan Miller, and he's stopped immediately by Benji Bauer. That brings up fourth down for Seneca. And that's another loss. Two losses on this set, first set of downs already. It looks like Seneca is going to punt here on fourth down. Zane Alexander back for Eisenhower about, to receive. It would appear to be about 18 yards. Alexander's got his heels dug in on the Eisenhower 46 right now. Uh, does not look like Seneca's going to punt, though. They come out in the Zane offense. Alexander. Oh, they do go back to the so kick. And Alexander's going to let that one go out of bounds. And let's see where they spot it here, Cody. That ball is going to be spotted. And the official brings a spot up. Wow, into Seneca territory. That ball went out at the Seneca 49. That was a very, uh, maybe a generous spot, but uh, certainly good field position for Eisenhower. Kind of similar to what we uh, had week one, where they played a lot of that game in opponent territory. So Eisenhower takes over now on the Seneca 49. Owen Trumbull in the gun. Kale Black to his left. Alexander goes in motion. Fakes to Alexander, gives it to Black, who goes up the middle, spins away from one defender, keeps chugging those feet, and looks like he gets down almost to the 45. They're going to mark him a little bit short. So about a uh, three-yard pick up there. Oh, no, they do put it on the 45, so a four-yard gain for Black. Knights hurry right back up and as we have seen all season, Cody, the Knights are uh, the running that hurry up the offense. They're going no huddle, looking to the sideline to get the call. Back, well, they have the team to uh, maintain a lead if they can get ahead early. Trumbull in the gun, black to his right. Alexander in motion again. This time they do pitch it to him. Picks up a block, gets away from one man, almost breaks away. Gets tripped up, but he does get Looks out like to the Seneca 37 the yard line, and that will be they a first down a first for down. Eisenhower. So the senior picks up a first down on his first carry of the night. And you are seeing a very senior heavy Eisenhower team right here. We had senior recognition so uh, right before the game down tonight, down and you see Trouble, Alexander, uh, Dylan the Benson, quarter. the leading receiver, a lot of seniors on this team. Trumbull's Benson in motion. Here comes Benson across. And Trumbull gives it to Black. No, he fakes. 
Looking Easy. for Robino way down the sideline, makes the catch. He is in for the Eisenhower touchdown. Oh, in trouble to Caleb Romano for 37 yards. Eisenhower takes a 6 0 lead, 9 19 to go here in the first quarter. And that touchdown was brought to you by Casey Auto Glass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Auto Glass. Jake Benman in for the kick now. Trumbull to hold. Snap is good. Hold is down. Kick is good. Jake Benman makes it 7-0 Eisenhower. 9-19 to go here in the first quarter. Well, that's why they run that hurry-up offense right out of the gate. Get on the scoreboard early. Uh, one of the things that Henley has focused on uh, coming into this season is controlling the clock and letting his, seems to be his uh, very improved defense take over the game. Yeah, you know, Cody, we were here in week one and they got down into Union City territory on the first three drives and didn't punch it in. Once they finally broke through and found the end zone, this offense has been nearly unstoppable since. Yeah, and if you want to have big wins, you got to take big chances sometimes. And they were running the ball, they were having some, some success on those first few plays. But open it up, stretch the field. It was a good decision, and now they're up 7 0. So, Benman in to kick. We've got Buscemi. Deep back for Eisenhower. Right, Benman squibs it. Squib kick up the middle. That ball is alive. And Buscemi fields, fields it. Two. Just outside the 20. Gets a couple here. yards and then is wrapped up. You know, and this is something we saw last week, Cody. They do the Eisenhower does these squib kicks and it really paid off for him against the Iroquois. The opening kickoff, they squibbed it all the way down to the five and then recovered. Uh, yeah, so, you would think by uh, watching a little bit of game film by week three now, teams would catch on to that, exactly. but it appears to have caught Seneca a little bit off guard as well. So Seneca is going to come out for their second possession now. They have first down at their own 26 yard line. Right, here we go. The Knights on defense. Yeah, Libra back in the gun. And Bulls Dave Randall behind him. And uh, excuse me, no, that's number uh, 15, number Nolan Seabury. Like uh, he got through the middle there. It looks like he may have lost a yard on that carry back down to the 25, so it'll be second 11 for Seneca. You know, and Cody, we talked about the question surrounding this Eisenhower team was the defense. And through the first two weeks of this season, they have been very stout up front. Yeah, they have eight turnovers, seven fumble recoveries, and one interception, and have held their opponents to six points. Yeah, they were back in the gun now. And he looks to pass, throws to his right. Uh, it looks like he was looking for uh, number 24, Jared Lorai there. Uh, incomplete pass. And so that'll bring up a third and 11. And this third and long is brought to you by Loughton Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. When you get backed up, call Loughton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning to get you moving again. Eight thirty-two to go here, first quarter. Seneca, Seneca facing third and eleven. Libra back to pass. He is under he pressure by kick. Kale Black and wrapped he up. Kale Black Kale with Black. a big He's sack for Eisenhower. Looks like a loss of about play. seven on that another play. Brings up loss. another fourth down for Seneca. Oh, so now Seneca is looking at about fourth and seventeen. Alexander comes out to receive the punt. Logan Kibbe, the deep man behind Libro. And Kibbe gets the punt off, nearly blocked there. Alexander going to field it at the 48. Gets away, gets away from, from one man, he's up the left sideline, side cuts back, back all the way to the near side, the looking to get away from and Libra, and he line. can't quite do it, but he does get down to the Seneca 14-yard no line. Field, Another big punt return from Zane Alexander. Spotted way down to the 14-yard line, big return by the senior. So Eisenhower is going to take over now inside the red so zone 7:35 to go here in the first quarter 
735. Oh, there is a flag down. Oh, there is a flag way back at the at the Seneca 49. So it looks like that big return is going to come back. Yeah, and these are some of the times that during in a game when you're uh, favored, like Eisenhower is, uh, you want to focus on crispness. And these are the errors, errors that Penley is, is dreading. Uh, because it keeps a team in the game longer than, well, than maybe you know, they were projected to be. So there is a block in the back against Eisenhower. That backs him up. They were going to start right. at the well, Seneca Eisenhower 14. They are now at their own 41 yard line. line. Trumbull in the gun. Black to his right. Trumbull's got the snap. And he Gets gives to Black up the middle. Kale Black trying to up the find his way Black through the line the there, but he does get up to about the 45. Should bring up a second and six now for Eisenhower. <laughs> and once again, Cody, like Kale Black has run out of his shoot. We, see, we saw that week one, he had a big run and had to come off the field because his shoe fell off and uh, happens to him again. But you'll have that sometimes when you're running uh, up the middle and trying to fight for those yards. Well, so Trumbull the fakes Trumbull the Bauer, the he's got great and he's got some coming. space in front of him. Big run on the keeper there nice from Owen Trumbull. Gets here. all the way down to the Seneca 38-yard well, line. Good read and run by the quarterback. Well into Seneca territory up to the 38-yard line. Eisenhower already back up to the line. And Black comes back in the game. little confusion getting the right personnel on the field but now they have it Welker and Alexander split wide to the left Benson to the near side goes Benson in motion Trumbull pitches to Benson, pitch to Benson goes around the left Benson's side he's got some blockers line. makes a man miss he's got a and gets down here. inside the Seneca 25 to the 24 uh, it looked like that was the Buscemi that made the tackle and Benson nearly broke one there yeah, he was one defender away from, from hitting pay dirt on that run. You know, and that's the thing, Cody. This Eisenhower offense can hit you in so many different ways. I and mean, we've already seen Trumbull with the deep pass, Black with hard running up the middle, Benson and Alexander getting those pitches on the end of the round. There's just so many different ways they can attack. Uh, we got first and ten. Yeah, hey, Trumbull in the gun, Black to his left. Trumbull's High snap, snap, gives There's it to Black up, the middle. Up the middle. He's, He's got, got some blockers the out He's front. Going. He's Still going. going. There he is inside Lieber the ten put the first line. hit on first him, but Black gets down the inside the 10. Uh, Libra and Jared Lorai on the stop. But Eisenhower now has a first and goal on the eight yard line. 5.50 to go here in the first quarter. Eisenhower leads Seneca 7-0 in this District 10 Region 5 contest. Bauer to Trumbull's left. Trumbull Trumbull's going to keep it all the way. Gets a little bit of blocking and he's in. But there is a flag. There is a flag down on the play. Uh, I think Bauer was holding his man a little bit on that one. But that is going to come back on a hold. Well, that was a nicely designed uh, quarterback run there, just Cody. Too easy. Trumbull was keeping that one all the way. Well, that goes back to you mentioning all the different weapons they have and ways they can beat you. And one of the things that tends to typically get forgotten when you're on uh, defense is the quarterback's well, mobility. First down. And that always sneaks up on you and will hurt you. Uh, Seneca got lucky on this play. We're going to try it again from the 11-yard line. Okay, so first and... Goal now from the 11. Trumbull's Trumbull fakes, to, snap, fakes to, black, to black. Looking at the end zone for Benson. Like overthrew him a little bit. No uh, Robinault looking for a flag on that one, but he's not going to get it. Uh, the defender was draped all over Benson in the so end zone. There, but the ball goes the over his head, so now it's second and goal from the 11 for Eisenhower. Well, unfortunately, there's no challenging in high school football. <laughs> Well, I don't know, Cody. We've got the we've got the uh, game stream brought to you by the computer out, guru of Leaper. Maybe eventually we'll be able to get some uh, replay going here at the high school level. <laughs> All right, second and goal now from the 11 for Blue Eisenhower. Trumbull's got Black to his left in the gun. Fakes to Black. 
Gives it to Alexander, who's wide open and gets into the end zone. Eisenhower touchdown, Owen Trumbull to St. Alexander for 11 yards. 5.20 to go here in the first quarter. Eisenhower now leads Seneca 13-0 with the extra point pending. And that touchdown was brought to you by KC Autoglass. You can see clearly you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Autoglass. Benman's kick is up and good. So 5.20 to go here in the first quarter. And Eisenhower leads Seneca 14 to zero. Right, lead 14-0, Much like the previous drive, Eisenhower utilizing the running game to get down the field. And then when they get within scoring distance or Penley sees a, a defensive opening in the secondary, they're, uh, they're taking advantage of it and using the passing attack. And we do want to take a moment to tell you that tonight's game is being brought to you by the Eisenhower Football Boosters, Casey Auto Glass. Need a windshield or power window repaired? How about a full glass replacement? Look to Casey Auto Glass in Sugar Grove. Casey Auto Glass specializes in auto glass services for all makes and models and proudly offers mobile auto glass repair service at no extra charge. Our full staff of certified technicians is ready to serve your auto glass needs in Warren or Chautauqua counties. Call 814-489-3924 or stop in at 12424 Jackson Run Road in Sugar Grove. Casey Auto Glass, proudly serving Sugar Grove and the surrounding communities for more than 20 years. Venman getting set to kick here for Eisenhower. All right, here we go. Here's Venman. Kick is underway. And kick Benman is actually away. kicks it deep this time to Buscemi. Gets it at the 16. Going to return it. Oh, got got return. some room got to run. There, and Buscemi gets it all the way Buscemi out to the 36-yard line. line or, excuse me, the 35. So Seneca will start on their 35-yard line. And also want to tell you tonight's broadcast is being brought to you by Wilcox yeah, Brothers right. True Value. Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove is your locally owned hardware store. We're proud to be a member of the True Value family and we're here to serve our community. Whether you're a pro or taking on a DIY home improvement project for the first time, we're right here in your neighborhood with the expert advice, tools, equipment, and products you need to get the job done. Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove. Libra looking deep down the left sideline. His man, Logan Kibbe, had a step, but Libra just overthrew him and tonight's game is also being brought to you by the bucket cafe need some pizza and wings to go with the game tonight then head to the bucket cafe at 14 main street in sugar grove great food great staff and great prices and the bucket now offers online ordering check them out on facebook or call 814-489-5000 so second and ten now for seneca libra in the gun nolan seabury behind him and, and the give is to Seabury up, up the middle. There. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, falls forward for maybe a yard on that. That'll bring up a third and nine for it's Seneca. Black in on the tackle. Maybe a yard on that here. He's going to bring up third and nine. And Seneca on his third possession has another third and long in this game. we got 438 to go here in the first quarter. Seneca trails Eisenhower 14 to 0. Bobcats have third and nine from their own 36. Lieber in the gun looking to pass. Black in the backfield hits him as he throws. Didn't quite get the sack on that play, Cody, but there's Kale Black again disrupting a pass play. Yeah, coming into this game, the Knights have four and a half sacks. Uh, so they have uh, 25 nine, tackles for a loss. And, and here, I don't even have a stat written down for how many times they've pressured a quarterback. Uh, but I imagine yard. given the differential in their scores, it's it's been through the roof. All right, so Alexander back deep for the Alexander Knights to receive the punt. Receive again. Let's see if he can work that magic another time, this time without a flag. Yeah. Kibbe looks deep, to ki or looks to kick here. Oh, low, low snap, snap. does oh, get the oh, kick away and it's a oh, deep boy. kick alexander well, backs alexander up and goes and over his head and, and takes a rolling. big seneca bounce all that the way down inside the football football. eisenhower 15. so the knights will take over first down on their own 13 yard line 
This might be the worst field position we've seen Eisenhower have yet this season. <laughs> yeah, they definitely have not had to pull together a whole lot of long drives so far this year, Cody, but uh, we'll see what they can do here now, backed up deep in their own territory. They certainly have the weapons to, to do it. So 417 to go here, first quarter. Eisenhower leads Seneca 14 to 0. Knights have their third possession now of the first quarter. First and ten on their own 13-yard line. As Eisenhower's deep is starting. Robinault split deep or split wide night. to the near side. Trumbull, Trumbull in the gun, the pitches snap, to Black. The ball to Black. Black's got Black's some blockers up front, gets away from one outside. man, and then is He's driven out of bounds. 20. That's good yardage there. Out across the 20, just shy of the 25. Looks really like the 23 yard line. The 22. It's a solid run on first down for Kale Black. So with that, he's just going to be one yard short of the first down. So we got the second and one now for one. Eisenhower. Trumbull in the gun. Black to his left. Robinault Alexander to the left. Benson in motion. Benson they pitch it to Benson going across the bat, the out to the left. Gets around the corner, stumbles a little bit. Yardage there. He will have Easily enough for the first, the first down, down. You know, and Cody, if he hadn't stumbled a little bit coming so around the, the edge, he might have picked up a up bunch more. Oh, absolutely. It was wide open on that far side of the field. But I'm sure they'll take the first down and continue this drive. So that's another nine so yards. First down, Eisenhower on their own 31 yard line. 31 yard. It's a trumble in the gun. Black to his right. There's a snap. Snap is high. Trumbull's able to reel, reel it in, but he is swallowed up in the backfield. That was number 15, Nolan Seabury, the first one to get to him. The snap went a little bit high. Trumbull was lucky to just come down with that one, Cody. Yeah, and he did the smart thing. He didn't try to do too much with it. Uh, looked for maybe an open man, but dropped, dropped to the ground pretty quick. Very intelligent play for the quarterback. It's a loss of six on that play. Brings up a second and 16. Benson comes on late. He goes split far to split wide to the far side. Oh, Another poor snap good. goes through yeah, Benson or Trumbull's hands. Trumbull. He gets away from Trumbull some pressure. We've got a flag. He's gonna get something positive out of this, but there is a flag down all the way back at the 14-yard line. And we are going to have a block in the back against Eisenhower. We have a block in the back, Paul. So Trumbull makes something out of nothing, but it goes for naught with the penalty. These were the errors alluded to earlier. Uh, you know, this is a game, like I said before, you want your offense to run crisp. You have two weeks into the season already. Um, these are mistakes that I'm sure are frustrating Penley, and I have no doubt when it, at halftime he will address these. Okay, so they are back in the Knights up all the way to the seven yard line. So, after the penalty, the ball so Eisenhower's got a second line. and forever here uh, so Eisenhower is on second their own seven yard line. And trouble Let's back to pass, happens. fakes, looking well, for the screen. He's got pass. Alexander. Alexander's, Alexander's got some space up the left there. side. We get the gets out across the here. 20 to the 21 yard line. He's so a 14 yard gain on that one. He gets a go big chunk of that yardage one. back, but still. So if we can do it math, is, it looks like we got 30 and 20. Third and, third and 19, third and 20 for the Knights. And this third and long is brought to you by Loughton Plumbing, right, Heating, and Air Conditioning. So we're gonna call it 30, when you get backed up, call Loughton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning to get you moving again. So Trumbull back in the gun, puts Black to his left. Knight's facing the biggest challenge of the night right here. And Trumbull keeps it, fakes the handoff, goes up the left side. Gets back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Not going to be enough for the Back first down, but does the get them out of the shadow of their own end zone. Well, it gives them a little room to, to punt the ball so down the field, and, down. and that's that's smart football. When you're backed up and like that, it's very difficult to get out of that hole. Okay, so we've got fourth and 11 now for Eisenhower. So that would be uh, fourth and 11. The Knights Robinall back to, to kick. 
We're going to rob it all back to punt. It looks like Buscemi's going to be back to receive. He's got his heels on the 38-yard line. Robinault with a rugby and style. And Robinault kicks it away. Gets the ball away. Takes nice an Eisenhower bounce. It's still rolling down inside the 30 and rolls out of bounds at the Seneca 28-yard line. Back at the Seneca 28-yard line. You know, and Cody, we said that was one of the few times where Eisenhower was going to have to drive the length of the field to score, and you see a couple bad snaps, and they had to punt it away. They did, but the special teams stepped up there, put uh, put the Bobcats deep in their own territory inside the 30, so, uh, which is where they've, they've been starting most of their drives and haven't had any success. So they were able to turn a negative into a positive, at least through special teams. Okay, so first and 10 now for Seneca from their own 28. Libra in the gun, Seabury back behind him. So here we are, Seneca, first and 10 on the 28. Oh, kind of and the give is to Seabury, and he is swallowed up immediately. You got Hag on the tackle. Looks like a loss of about got five there. on the tackle there, too. And Benji Bauer with an assist. Seabury <laughs> got the ball, and there was about four yeah. knights there to greet him. Yeah, he had nowhere to go on that play. Okay, so Lots second three and on the play. 15 now bring up for second and 13. Seneca. They're Under back up down to the their first quarter. own 23 now. And Libra empties the formation. Three receivers to his right, two to his left. Yeah. The quarterback Quick pass to number 15, Nolan Seabury, and he's got space in front Boy, of him. He's got the side looking he's to get Brad Benson runs, runs him down. But he is pushed out at the 14. Sorry, about the 14-yard line. Just that quick little pass, Cody, and Seabury was off to the races. Yeah, that was looked a, a lot similar to uh, Eisenhower taking advantage of the Bobcats line. defensive set. They saw an opening and they just hit him. And, and there's that speed that, that Eisenhower coach Jim Penley was worried about. Uh, Seabury broke the broke the containment, was wide open, and nearly outraced everyone to the end zone. But it does bring up a first down for Seneca at the Eisenhower 14. And about the entire uh, defensive line jumped on that play. Well, looks like we're a little quick there. That'll so be a five-yard penalty against the Knights. So offsides on Eisenhower makes so it a Seneca first and five, five from the five. nine. Seneca breaks the huddle now. Libra in the gun. Seabury behind him. Seneca quarterback takes a And snap. they give the ball to Buscemi. Tries to go around to the, the left side. The gets back there. maybe to the line of scrimmage. Maybe one yard there. And it'll bring up a second and five for Seneca now. With... 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It looks like Seneca's content to looks flip like the that's field. The end of the quarter, folks, with Eisenhower. And our first quarter was nothing. brought to you by BGM it's Custom nice Wear hand. by Brookfield Glove. Looking to outfit your team with a quick turnaround time? Then give BGM Custom Wear by Brookfield Glove a try. At BGM Custom Wear by Brookfield Glove, we believe businesses, individuals, and teams should be able to represent themselves at a reasonable price. We have access to thousands of different products like hats, polos, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, and more from your favorite brand. BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove can be reached at 814-849-7325 or check them out online at brookvilleglove.com and like them on Facebook. And tonight's game is also being brought to you by Nolf Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fairmont City. Looking for a new new or used car or truck, then look no further than Nolf Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fairmont City. Nolf's selection of Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram truck brands coupled with an assortment of used vehicles provide customers a wide variety of buying options. They have the vehicle you need at the price no, you can folks, afford. Nolf's service and parts team of so highly qualified sure technicians is focused on providing exceptional service in a timely manner, there. and its body shop can't be beat. 
Visit Nolf's online at nolfdodge.com. Like them on Facebook or stop by and see what they have to offer. And by KC Auto Glass. Need a windshield or power window repair? How about a full glass replacement? Then look to KC Auto Glass in Sugar Grove. KC Auto Glass specializes in auto glass services for all makes and models and proudly offers mobile auto glass repair service at no extra charge. Our full staff of certified technicians is ready to serve your auto glass needs in Warren or Chautauqua County. Right, here we go with Seneca, second and five, the quarterback's got the ball. has got pressure from Black, and he pressure. throws it away on second Gets down, away, brings up a third and five. Ground. And just to finish that up on KC Auto Glass, call them at 814-489-3924, right or stop in at 12424 Jackson Run Road in Sugar Grove. KC Auto Glass, proudly serving Sugar Grove so and the surrounding communities for more than 20 years. Down there on the nine so you've got a line. third and five now for Seneca on the nine. And again, Lieber dropped back to, pra to pass, and <laughs> Kale Black was on him immediately, Cody. Yeah, he's facing a lot of pressure on almost every pass play. Uh, fortunately for him, he's getting rid of the ball, uh, which is helping their offensive drive stay alive. Okay, so Lieber back now, and Seabury behind him. Here we go again. Fakes a handoff, looks to pass, he's got a man. That is number 18, Bo Barber, in the end zone for the Seneca touchdown. 11.48 to go. Eisenhower leads 14 to six. Good throw and catch. So now we've got 14 to six. And that touchdown was brought to you by Casey Autoglass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Autoglass. Point after attempt upcoming, uh, but that whole drive, yeah, Cody, was really set up by Seneca defense forced the punt, and then Seabury broke Looks free like on the pass. And honestly, there. is a lot of what we've seen Eisenhower do over the first two weeks of the season. Quarterback. Okay, it looks like Seneca's going for two. Libra gives it to Seabury, who's hit and wrapped by Benji Bauer. So the try is no good. Eisenhower leads Seneca 14 to six with 11:48 to go here in the second quarter. So the score remains 14 to six. And our second quarter is brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. Swift Kennedy and Company in Dubois is an independent property and casualty insurance agency and the official insurance agency of D9 and 10 Sports.com. Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company, insurance with integrity since 1921. Good transition there. I have some scores for you, Brian. I hope you're paying attention. Reynolds is up 27 to zero over Kennedy Catholic in the first quarter. West Middlesex up seven to zero over Mercer in the second quarter. Farrell has a 21-0 right. lead over Greenville in the first You're quarter. And Wilmington is up 21-0 over Sharpsville in the first too. quarter. And that out-of-town scoreboard was brought to you tonight by Let's the Bucket that. Cafe in Sugar Grove. Ooh, we got some shifty things here. I don't and know. it looks like uh, Seneca's Ooh, taking a timeout before the kickoff here. We'll take advantage of the timeout. Maplewood. It, they're up eight to six over Lakeview in the second quarter. Cochranton and Northwestern are tied at zero in the first. Cambridge Springs has a 14-0 lead over Sagertown in the first. Iroquois over Union City, 13-0 in the first quarter. Corey up 7-0 over Northeast in the first. Harbor Creek, seven. General McLean, zero in the first quarter. Titusville and Meadville are all knotted up at zero. And McDowell has a 14-0 lead over Cathedral Prep in the second quarter. And again, tonight's out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by the Bucket Cafe in Sugar Grove. Uh, excuse me, our out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. Swift Kennedy and Company, the official insurance provider of D9IntenseSports.com. So it looks like Seneca's got it figured out now. Logan Kibbe getting ready to right. kick off. Uh, Caleb Romanalt is back deep for the Knights. The and there is an onside, onside kick. Onside. Takes a bounce, and Benji Bauer scoops it up. He goes. Can he make it? 
Yes, he will. Benji Bauer scoops an onside kick and returns it all the way for an Eisenhower touchdown. 11.41 to go here in the second quarter, and Eisenhower now leads 20-6. We've got another score, 20-6. I can't really come up with a valid reason outside of, of trying to take advantage of momentum, why you would onside kick in that situation. Uh, but it worked in the Eisenhower Knights' favor there. So after the special teams right. touchdown, Benman on the kick. On the kick. Snap down. is good, hold kick is down, up. kick is up, oh, and good. Eisenhower leads 21 to 6 here, 1141 to go in the second quarter. And that touchdown was brought to you by KC Auto Glass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by KC Auto Glass. And, and Cody, how about the uh, awareness by, by Bauer on that onside kick to see that there was nobody in front of him and just take off? Oh yeah, he had, I mean it was a clear lane and, and nobody was catching him. Uh, you know, we spoke of Seneca's speed, but we don't want to um, downplay Eisenhower's speed. They have a lot of quick players on this team as well. Yeah, and, I mean, most most folks are aware of, you know, the, the Bensons and Alexanders and Romanovs. And Benji Bauer is a young and upcoming player, and he just showed they are not going to be lacking for speed when some of these seniors graduate. A couple weeks ago, Penley touched on the depth that he had in getting these guys into the game, and that right there is why. It gives them an opportunity to make a play. So, Venman sets a kick now. Right, here's Venman with a kick. And let's see, he it's gives the squib kick again. Slow, bounces. Up to Libra, and he'll take it out to the 27 yard line. And that's where Seneca will take over. At about the 27 yard line. And just want to remind you that our game stream tonight is brought to you by the Computer Guru of Leaper. When you need computer repairs or service, call the Computer Guru of Leaper at 814-744-7580. Good, so Seneca looked like they were going to have some momentum. They got that big pass play and then punched it into the end zone. And then tried for the onside kick, and now all of a sudden, they're down two scores again. Special teams plays can take the wind out of sails. Okay, Libra back to pass. Has some pressure. He's got a man Ooh, over the middle. Was Buscemi had some space there, but Libra overthrew him a little bit. Man, if he had put that on the numbers, Buscemi might have gone. Yeah, that's a play that Penley's going to want to keep his eye on. I, I can guarantee you the Bobcats will go back to that play because it was wide open and there was no one between him and the end zone. Second and ten for Seneca. You know, and that's something when we talk about this Eisenhower defense, the thing that's really plagued them in the last couple of years is giving up the big play. And we saw it on the scoring drive for Seneca. They gave up the big pass play and it led to a touchdown. They almost gave up another one right there. Yeah, they were very fortunate that that ball was tipped and not pulled down. Okay, so Seneca comes out, Seneca comes out now, second and 10. And Lever's gonna pass again, rolls under pressure, evades. Takes off, but then he's brought down by Kale Black. Black. Finds him again and drags him down. Looks like Lieber was able to get back to, to the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up third and 11. Loss of one on the play. Sorry, he didn't quite make it back to the line of scrimmage. So it's another third and long for Seneca. And this third and long is brought to you by Loudon Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. When you get backed up, call Loudon's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning to get you moving again. So Seneca, third and 11 now on their own 26-yard line, trailing Eisenhower 21-6, 10.45 to go second quarter. Lieber back in the gun, has four receivers out. Oh, oh, bad, bad snap, snap. it gets away oh, from Lieber, he scoops it up, and then he gets he swallowed is. up down by there. number 54, 54 there, that's uh, Jared, Jared Pierce. Pierce. Puts the hammer down. You know, Lieber was lucky to get that ball back up in his possession. He was. He even had a few seconds to look downfield like he was going to try to there, find an open so receiver, but that Eisenhower front defensive line there, they're just so aggressive. 
Okay, so a loss on the play brings up a fourth and 13 now for Seneca. Alexander back to receive the punt. And that is Kibbe back. We have the seniors We've seen Seneca come Seneca out in this formation. Libra punt. comes out and then shifts. And then the snap goes to Kibbe. It's oh, a bouncing snap. The ground. And it he's Kibbe scoops it up. He's looking for he's some space to, to the left. But Schroeder runs him out of bounds. And now oh, another God, special teams there. play could get Eisenhower some great field position. And it looks like there's going to be. Well, Eisenhower is going to have first down for Eisenhower there. just outside the 20 yard line of so Seneca. Eisenhower has the ball just this side of the 20 yard line, first and 10. Cody, there we see it again. Special teams making the difference for Eisenhower. Yeah, it was certainly not a topic that we touched on prior to the game, but it's, it's playing a large role for both teams currently. Okay, so 9.39 to go here in the first half. Eisenhower leads Seneca 21 to six. Eisenhower has the ball first and 10 at the Seneca 21 yard line. Trumbull in the gun, Black to his left. Trumbull's got the snap. He fakes the handoff to Black, cuts, cuts back, back to his right middle. and goes up the middle Pretty for a nice game. Down Gets down to about the 12 yard Looking line it looks like. 12 yard line there. Just oh, shy of a first eight, down on that eight, play. Almost nine yards there, so we're going to call it second and two. And again, Cody, you know, Trumbull looks like that prototypical pocket passer, but when he needs to, he's got the feet to right, get it going. Go oh, he came to an almost complete set. stop and cut Trumbull's back. Hey, quick pass to Benson on the goal screen. He cuts back in and then back out. And he stretches out across the goal line. Touchdown, Eisenhower. Owen Trumbull to Dylan Benson for 12 yards. And Eisenhower extends the lead 27 to now 6 with 8.59 to go. You know, and that was just that the athleticism of Benson after catching the ball on the little bubble screen there uh, to evade a man, evade another one, and then stretched across the goal line. Absolutely, and those little things about stretching to pass, get, get ben across ben. the goal line. Those are Good those again. are the things that make teams winning football teams uh, just fighting for every inch. And Benman's point after attempt is good. So with 8:59 to go here in the first half, Eisenhower leads Seneca 28 to six. And that touchdown was brought to you by KC Auto Glass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Autoglass. Today's second quarter is brought to you by Swift Kennedy & Company. Swift Kennedy & Company in Dubois is an independent property and casualty insurance agency and the official insurance agency of D910Sports.com. Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company, insurance with integrity since 1921. So Benman getting set to kick off again here for Eisenhower. And we'll see, we, we saw Cody, the one time the Knights had Benman kick it deep, Led to, to the go. scoring drive for Seneca, so he will squib it again. Yeah, I'm it not bounces sure. again. Lieber gets it at the 21, and it is hit and wrapped. I'm not sure we'll see another deep kick again. That looked like Keegan Extra maybe on the tackle. It's Keegan Extra. Good tackle by Keegan Extra. So Seneca now has the ball first and ten at their own 24-yard line. And again, thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. This is District 10 High School Football brought to you by D9 and 10 Sports.com and powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters. I would say for Seneca, it's not a time to panic, but it's certainly uh, they don't want to go into any more of a hole than they're already in. Uh, they've shown a little offensive life, so there's really no need to, to get too crazy right now. So Libra gives it off to Seabury, looks for space up the middle, and there is none. 
There was a little hole for about a second, but then Benji Power and it looked like Kale Black again just converged on the hole and made the stop. Yeah, just to see a sea of blue jerseys. Every play, that is what Seneca is facing up front. If they're lucky, they're meeting them at the line of scrimmage. A lot of times it's in the backfield. And that, again, was a tackle for loss there. Loss of two on the play. It's a second and 12 now for Seneca from their own 22-yard line. Dennis Mees. Zebra barking signals at the line. That's a man in motion. And he gives it. Right away. Gives it all. Gets into the backfield there. To that was number 30, Ryan Miller. And Benji Bauer sniffed that play out immediately. So another big loss for Seneca. Big loss on that play. They're backed up all the way down to their 15-yard line. Boy, the ball is clear back on the 15-yard line now. Seneca faces... Uh-oh, uh-oh, we've got problems with the clock. Not the clock so much. Just and, the you know, Cody, outside of that scoring drive for Seneca, they've had third and exceptionally long oh, on almost every possession. Yeah, Eisenhower's defense uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. I, I guess the ball is going to be in the two-yard line the rest of the night. Then. Okay, so Seneca comes out now. Third down from their 15-yard line. They need to get all, right, all the way up the ball, to takes the a snap. 29. He's to throw. Libra's He's got, got a man. And he drops it in here. Had a man open there. And that was caught that ball. Uh, it's very unlikely. Yeah, well, we don't have a number 12 on our Seneca roster. We had number 12 open there. Uh, ball hit him right in the chest. Is a punting situation. But again, Seneca fails to get that pass and get going, even though the, goal the receivers are so open. Yeah, are and they're finding here. lanes. They're just not executing well enough. Those are the opportunities when you're down. When you're down a, a few scores, those are the opportunities you really got to take advantage of, even if you're back in your own territory. Okay, so Seneca comes out now. Fourth down, looking to punt. Alexander's back on the 40, backs up. Boy, the punt does get away. High, high punt. Alexander comes up and fields it at the 35. Uh, apparently he had, he had called for the fail, so the fair catch. The Knights will take over first and 10 on the 35 with 6 you know, to go. If he hadn't Just called for the fair catch on that, the uh, they might have been down inside the red zone at least. Absolutely. There was, there was clear running room there. But as high as that punt was, uh, it was also set up that, that he really could have taken a lick on that on that punt return. So 6.59 to go here in the first half. Eisenhower leads Seneca 28 to six. Eisenhower has the ball first and 10 on the Seneca 35 so yard line. We got Alexander to this side. Trouble in the gun, Black to his left. The give is to Black up the middle, makes a man miss. Gets He's away from it. one defender, still he chugging those feet. He right gets down left. almost to the 25, the a nine yard gain there for Kale Black, a more tough running up He's the middle. Probably got about eight yards up the middle. That's gonna bring, down, bring up second and two. Second and one now for Eisenhower from the 26-yard line. Three receivers Trouble all to the snap. right, and Black the give is to Black up the, the middle. Again. Boy, he's just There's a little the jump cut. Right the Gets down inside the 20-yard line Over to the, the 19, to spot it at where the it'll be first down for line. Eisenhower. It's going to be first and 10. And, and this is what the Knights have really been able to do, Cody. They get out to this big lead, nice and then they just here. feed that stable of running backs that they got. Kale Black, we haven't seen Colby Hag touch the ball at fullback yet, but he had a strong game for Eisenhower last week. And we may see him. He's in the game now as Eisenhower comes out in the eye. And the pitch is to, pitch Black. to Black. He's got Hag out in front of him. And there's a flag down on the play. And it is a hold against Eisenhower. Looks like we got a hold there. Okay, so the Knights are going to get backed up a little bit here. All right, 
right, so that's going to move the Knights back. Okay. Right, so they're going to bring it back to the 29, 28, 29 yard line. Or excuse me, the 24 yard right, line. We're there. Back on the 24 yard line here, the Knights are going to have about. Looks to be about first and 14. The replay first down. Trumbull's going to take a timeout. There was some confusion. Well, the Knights call a timeout. The, uh, what the play call was there for Eisenhower. We've got 5.44 to go here in the first half. Eisenhower leads Seneca 28-6. to Knights take a timeout. We're going to take one with them and tell you that tonight's game is being brought to you by Warren Tire Center. For all your automotive needs, look no further than Warren Tire Center. From new tires to tire repairs, PA state inspections, wheel alignments and auto detailing, and so much more. There's no reason to go anywhere but Warren Tire Center in Warren, PA. With over 40 years of serving Warren and surrounding communities, it's always a great day at Warren Tire Center. We offer same-day service and walk-ins are welcome. Warren Tire Center open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they can be reached at 814-723-8050 or on the web at warrentirecenter.com. So Eisenhower comes out okay, of the timeout. Come the again. First, First and down, 14 now. Alexander in Alexander motion. Trouble fakes the hand to Alexander. Gives it to Black off the, the left ball. side. Stiff it. arm gets away. He's, he's got the corner. And he's Black in, the end zone. in for the Eisenhower oh, touchdown. Nice. 24 yards from oh, Kale Black. And Eisenhower pushes the lead now to 34 to 6 with 5.33 to go here in the first half. 34 for the Knights. You know, the little misdirection on that play, Cody. They faked Alexander, or faked the handoff to Alexander coming across, gave it to Black. He found the edge and was off to the races. Yeah, the only thing between Black and the end zone was uh, one defender and kick is up and gave him a good. stiff it's arm and was clear for a score. Hey, and Benman's so kick is good, so now it's 35 to 6. Eisenhower, 5.33 to go here in the first quarter. There, excuse me, in the first half. And as the uh, cheerleaders start their push-ups, we're going to let you know that tonight's second quarter is being brought to you by Swift Kennedy & Company. Swift Kennedy & Company in Dubois is an independent property and casualty insurance agency and the official insurance agency of D9 and 10 Sports.com. Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company, insurance with integrity since 1921. So Jake Benman getting set to kick here right, as Benman. Eisenhower leads 35 to 6 with 533 to go here in the second quarter. And the ball bounces and Libra scoops it up at the 20 looking for a space. Founds a little crease, gets away from two guys, and brings it out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Actually, Jake Bentman had to do the job himself. He got him. A nice, solid return there from Colin Libra. Put Seneca in business. First down on their own 36. If Seneca wants any shot at coming back in this game, it's a play like that to kick it off. Um, they have good field position. Uh, I would say it's probably their second best field position that they've had on the night. Yeah, and we, you, we saw how special there. teams really shifted the game right back in, in Eisenhower's favor after Seneca had cut the lead down to eight. Uh, big uh, kickoff return and uh, special teams miscue by, by Seneca got Eisenhower to extend the lead. And now Seneca's got to try to find a way to claw their way back in it. Here we go. Yeah, so Libra in the gun. Looking to pass. He's got Seabury. Seabury makes the catch, stretches out to the 39 yard line. You know, and that was that was the play that they uh, broke one on earlier, Cody. But this time Eisenhower was ready. Can bring it second and seven. So a second and seven here for Seneca on their own. 39 yard line. Just under five minutes to go here in the first half. Bobcats trail the Knights 35 to 6. Lieber back with Seabury behind him. 
quarterback in motion, and they do give it off to Logan Kibbe. And the ball's on the ground. Eisenhower says they have it. They do. And there's that defense again, Cody, forcing another turnover. So Eisenhower now gets the ball back with four and a half to go here in the first half. And a chance to extend the lead even more. So Eisenhower will take over on the Seneca 38 yard line after the fumble by Logan Kibbe. 4.35 left to go in the half. Plenty of time for some more fireworks here. With the time left on the clock, Eisenhower can still go to their running game, run this time down, nice work on his defense and, and get them tired out. Yeah, Steve, Riley see Steve Riley in at fullback. Black dots the eye of the pitch, Black's it's to Black. Got the He's got Riley the edge again, blocking. trying to get He's away from him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Brian Miller grabbed a hold of Kale Black's there. jersey and just would not let go, or Black may have had his second of the day. I don't care nice who you are, you're not going to bring nice Black line. down by hanging off his jersey, at least not for a few yards. <laughs> yeah. nice, you're doing so a heck of a job another, out there. another big run by Kale Black. Gives Eisenhower a first down at the 24-23 yard line. Yard line. So the Knights have a first and ten. So Trumbull under center. The Colby Hag, Colby Colby Hag back. Benson comes in motion. The give is to Black Black's up the middle. Again, He's right picking his way goes. through. Running over defenders, right carrying defenders. Doing whatever he has to for those extra yards, he gets down to the 11 this and another Eisenhower first down. Another first down. Leave the ball spotted just on this side of the 10. That About carry, the that carry right there puts 10. Black right at the 100 yard mark for the first half. So another big uh, ground game for Kale Black. Uh, he came in as the team's leading rusher. Trumbull Three rolls Trumbull to his right, looking to pass. He's got under. Benson in the end zone. Just missed him, and Trumbull knows it. <laughs> he he saw that pass go and immediately started clapping. That was a touchdown if he put it on the money. I like the play call there. Catch the defense off guard. You've been beating them up up front with Kale Black, and then making uh, their secondary uh, might be thinking run and uh, catching them off guard. That was, that was a good decision. So second. Just a little off the mark, Brian. Second and Kill 10 now for back. Eisenhower. Ooh, Trumbull pitches to Black, who's got lots of green on the right the side. Runs over a minute, oh, he couldn't quite stay in bounds. He does, he gets in! That is an Eisenhower touchdown! Hail Black for 11 yards. Yeah, Black kind of he got down to the two yard line there and kind of side shuffled into the end zone. It looked like he might have stepped out, but the official had no hesitation and threw up the touchdown. So second touchdown for Kale Black here in a, about Kale the last Black two minutes. Venman in for the point after attempt. Snap is good, Venman's hold it down, kick, kick is, up, is up and is good. good. So with 3.21 to go here in the first half, Eisenhower leads Seneca 42 to six. I want to tell you tonight's game is being brought to you by Allegheny Grill of Foxburg. Hi, this is Brian Hagberg here from D9and10sports.com. And I want to take a second to tell you about one of the best restaurants in all of Western Pennsylvania. The Allegheny Grill in Foxburg, VA. With indoor and outdoor dining, you can enjoy prime rib all weekend long. Or perhaps it's their full wings served on Thursday wing nights the year after. From celebrating a special, Foxburg is the place to be. As they like to say, you will come for the food and stay for the view. Reserve your table today at AlleghenyGrill.com. So Venman back to kick. Kick is away. And he squibs it. Bounces. Libra's gonna. No, that's Buscemi. Sorry. Buscemi tried to take off with it. 
bobbled it a little bit and then fell down at the 24 yard line. This is where Seneca will take over with 3.18 to go here in the first half. And Bobcats trail Eisenhower 42 to 6. So Seneca has three minutes. Well, Brian, a couple of series ago, I said the Seneca didn't need to panic. I would say now it's time to panic. Now, <laughs> now, you know, if they want any chance of getting, getting back into this game or making this a game, they, they have got to get down the field fast and, and put the ball in the end zone. You know, and, and Cody, they've had chances. They, they've had some of these receivers have been open and the balls hit them in the hands and there's been drops and a couple overthrows. So the plays have been there. If Seneca could execute, this would definitely be a ball game right now. Oh, absolutely. So Lieber fakes to Buscemi. He's going to keep it himself. He's got some space and he breaks through down the near sideline, tries to get away from Trumbull, and Trumbull wraps him up and says, I'm not going to let you get any more than that one. Big game, though, off the sideline here. Not try, trouble, I think, making uh, Eisenhower wrestling line. coach Chris Black proud there. Looked like he was going for a little uh, German suplex, maybe. Blackie might be asking Trumbull to come out for the wrestling team this year. So big run there for Libra for Seneca. Puts them first Definitely down at their own 49-yard line. Uh, but again, Cody, you said that, you know, panic time there's no sense of urgency they're still in the huddle with just under three minutes to go here and Libra gives it to Seabury up the, the middle and that's just not working Colby Hags there Eisenhower's been blowing up those dives looks all like night Vanetta's night. right there on him also met him right in the hole uh, looked like Hag and Vanetta on the, on the tackle there and that's another tackle for loss Teams just have not been able to run up the middle on, on Eisenhower all season long. You know, talking about panicking there, uh, it's not just the score, it's the way that That's Eisenhower is scoring that Seneca 11. needs to strike fast because Eisenhower is going to control the clock in the second half. There's no doubt about that. Just under two minutes to go here in the first half. Libra gives it to Ryan Miller. He's met right there. Owen Trumbull's got him. And again, another tackle for loss from Eisenhower. They came in with 25 through two games. Already have a handful here tonight. Wrap that one up also. And that's going to bring up another third and long for Seneca. On that play. It's not and third, this third and long is brought to you by Loudon's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. When you get backed up, call Loudon's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning to get you moving again. So Seneca, Seneca now, now third down from their own 42 yard, 42 yard line brings up a third and 16. And Libra back to pass, looking under pressure, looking down the sideline, almost intercepted. But that was number uh, 43, Stephen Riley. Looking house Nearly, right oh, sorry, that was 13 White Looking House. That's never gonna be had that ball in his, in his hands and just couldn't come up with it. But again, that's Seneca so finally takes their shot and, and Lieber underthrows it a little bit and nearly turns the ball over. Well, Wyatt is a freshman player, but he's he's a he's a sophomore player, excuse but me, but he's they're probably a basketball go player as well, very good basketball so player. He had some ups there, uh, just couldn't pull down really that needing a score. So 107 to go here in the first half. 107 and left. Seneca looks like they're going to punt. So we'll see what's going to happen here. Well, now, now Alexander comes up anticipating the no, fake. They are going to punt. And Kibby does Ooh, kick it and almost play. blocked. Eisenhower's just going to let and it go. And the ball bounces, takes a Seneca the bounce, is down by Seneca but is play. down by Buscema right line. on the 20 yard line yeah. with 59.6 seconds to go here in the Just first half. We'll see how aggressive Eisenhower is. Well, from what we've seen over the last couple of weeks, I have no doubt that they're going to they're gonna punch the ball, uh, try to run out the clock, obviously, to get to the half. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to put the ball in the end zone in just under a minute. The way Kale Black's been throwing defenders off. <laughs> so we'll see how aggressive the Knights want to be here as they break the huddle. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line, 59.6 seconds to go in the first half. Right, Trumbull in the, the gun, Knights, first and 10 under 20. Black to his left. Benson comes across in motion, fake to Benson, give to Black up the middle, sheds a defender, gets a crease off the right side, 
comes back up the middle, tries to shake off another man, but he gets all the way out to the 49-yard line. A 29-yard run for Kale Black on first down. Stops the clock as they reset the chains. 48.9 seconds to go. Eisenhower right back on the ball. And Trumbull takes a snack, flips it to Benson, looking for blocker, spins away from one man. Couldn't quite get away from Ryan Miller. Gets up to the 45 of Seneca. You know, Eisenhower's got two timeouts left with 27 seconds to go. But they are going to run the hurry up. Trumbull takes a snap, rolls to his right. He's looking, looking. He's got Benson. Benson makes the catch. Diving catch by Dylan Benson. Just outside the 20-yard line. And Eisenhower takes a timeout with 14 seconds to go. The ball is spotted just shy of the 20-yard line of Seneca. So we wondered how aggressive they would be, Cody. you got to think that big 29-yard run by Kale Black to get the drive started really forced them to, to run that hurry up. Oh, absolutely. They went from uh, trying to just get to the half to having a real opportunity to put the ball in the end zone. And that big pass play there and not calling a timeout, I think, was purely to keep going on that momentum. So they get the big run from Black. Another big pass play from Trumbull to Benson, where we heard that one before. Right. <laughs> And then Eisenhower takes the timeout. They've got the ball on the Seneca 21-yard line. 14.3 seconds left in the half. Eisenhower leads Seneca 42 to six. And Eisenhower is driving here. And, and you wonder, Cody, if they can't get it in the end zone, do they try to move up a few yards? Because Jake Venman's got some leg on him. I think it's certainly an option. Uh, I expect him to maybe take a, a shot. Uh, and see where they can end up. But uh, settling for a field goal right. with a big lead go. is not a bad place not to be. It's Trumbull in the gun, empty backfield. Trumbull. Drops back to pass, he's looking, looking, looking. now he rolls, flag, flag is down. Trumbull escapes, he he's still he's going. going. He's going. Trumbull's going to run all the way into the end zone, but this is probably going to be coming back. There is a holding on Eisenhower with less than a second to go here in the half. And we've got holding. So you wonder if, if Trumbull had seen the flag, if he would have just gone down to save some time. Because you never know what that flag is on. We're going to have one more chance. But that's that's definitely going to take the field goal out of the out of the equation here. And, and like we said, Benman's got some leg. You know, a number of the the players talked about the comeback in the Springs the last year, and, and Jake Benman capped that off with a game-winning field goal. So we know he's he's got the ability to do that. But that holding penalty brings the Knights all the way back to the 35-yard line the last play of the with half. 0.6 seconds to go. So last play of the half here. Trumbull in the gun, Trumbull's got and the he is going to throw it. Looking downfield. Trying to get away from the man, he does. Rolls to his right. More pressure. Still looking. And he throws it in the end zone. Zane Alexander is caught, but there is a flag down. I think he might have been beyond the line of scrimmage. Over the place, several. Yeah, I almost, I almost think Brian that if Trumbull would have pulled that down and kept running with it, he, he may have been able to make it to the end zone. There was a lot of open space. So, penalty negates the touchdown pass from Trumbull to Alexander. Sorry to say, we, we, you can't do it that way. So that'll be the end of that. Still nothing to complain about for Eisenhower in that first half. Hey, but it looked real fun. Anyway. And we've still got some consultation here between the, the officials, and it looks like Seneca coach Don Einhouse I gotta believe Seneca's gonna accept that penalty. All right, let's. No, I mean, if they, if they didn't take the penalty. Yeah, I'm not, not really sure what the uh, officials are conferring about here. 
but both teams are still on the field. Somebody will figure it out here in a minute. Henley, figure it out. Long conference here from the officials. It looks like we're going to get a, a ruling here. Okay, so so it was an illegal right, forward. So All of that to tell us what we knew. It was an illegal forward pass, and that is the end of the first half. Eisenhower leads Seneca 42 to 6. And that second quarter was brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. So Swift Kennedy and Company in Dubois is an independent, and independent and property and casualty insurance and agency and the official insurance agency of D9and10sports.com. Well, Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and here. Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company, insurance with integrity since 1921. And tonight's halftime show is brought to you by BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove. Looking to outfit your team with a quick turnaround time? Then give BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove a try. At BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove, we believe businesses, individuals, and teams should be able to represent themselves at a reasonable price. We have access to thousands of different products like hats, polos, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, and more from your favorite brand. BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove can be reached at 814-849-7325 or check them out online at brookvilleglove.com and like them on Facebook. And tonight's broadcast of high school football on d 9 and 10sportscom is powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters and brought to you by the Rehab Center. With six conveniently located offices in Brookville, clearing and containing, the rehab centers offer a range of chiropractic and rehabilita rehabilitation treatments. Call them today for an appointment at 724-478-1501. One number gets you into any of the six offices. Like them on Facebook. That's the rehab center spelled the old English way with an R-E at the end. And by Warren Tire Center. For all your automotive needs, look no further than the Warren Tire Center. From new tires to tire repairs, Pennsylvania State inspections, wheel alignments and auto detailing, and so much more. There's no reason to go anywhere but Warren Tire Center in Warren, PA. With over 40 years serving Warren and surrounding communities, it's always a great day at Warren Tire Center. We offer same-day service and walk-ins are welcome. We're open Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5. Warren Tire Center can be reached at 814-723-8050 and on the web at warrentirecenter.com. To and tonight's game stream is brought First to you by the Computer Guru of Leaper. When you need computer Angela repairs or service, call the Computer Guru Godden of Leaper at 814-744-7580. Concession stand food. And tonight's broadcast is also brought bus, to you by Wilcox Brothers True Value. Wilcox Brothers True Value and Sugar Grove is your locally owned hardware store. We're Coming proud to be a member of the True Value family and, and we're here to serve our community. Whether you're a pro or taking on a DIY home improvement project for the first time, Angela's we're right here in your neighborhood with the expert advice, tools, equipment, and the products you need to get the job done. Wilcox Brothers True Value and Sugar Grove PA, we're here to help. Come in and see us today. And by All American Awards and Engraving, D9 and 10 Sports.com's very own Chris Rossetti first met Jim Carroll of All American Awards and Engraving in Shippenville in 2006. The company was just getting started. Since then, it has grown into the area's premier shop for embroidery, screen printing, and engraving to graphic design and personalized gift ideas. And with brand new expansion to his building on Route 322 in Shippenville, things continue to grow. But at the heart of it is Jim and the fact services are built around the needs of the customers. All American Awards and Engraving offer a huge selection of apparel, trophies, and awards to help its customers find that perfect item every time. As they say, they will put almost anything on almost everything. So call them today at 814-782-6264 or check them out at allamericanhq.com. Amber Dawn Henley. Amber is the daughter of Debbie and Jim Henley. 
So and as you can see, here we are include, doing what, senior recognition the for the uh, marching band, band here at halftime. And we are at Eisenhower High School, where the Knights lead Seneca 42 to 6 in a District 10 Region 5 contest. You really tatered my tops now. Is this field laminated? Trumpet anatomy. Most conjoined twins are playing What Are the Odds? Devin's Poetry. It's kind of like basketball. Kick 'em and eat 'em. Ice cream, the ladder, and the marker. And messing around with their friends at football games. Amber's future plans right, are to move to the Tonight's first warm. half stats are Your brought PhD to you by Wilcox Brothers True Value. Cody, what do we have in the career, first half? Well, it's been I, happy, I, Eisenhower's game. Cats. And the offense has really been running the show and running up the score. Uh, Trumbull, however, is 6 for 8, 90 yards seniors. with three touchdowns. Uh, Kale Black has put up 139 yards in the first half on 11 carries and been in the end zone twice. Uh, one of the negatives for Eisenhower, one of the few negatives, has been they, they've committed a lot of penalties. Uh, they're over 50 yards in penalties, something that I'm sure Penley's going to want to clean up for the second half, despite the score. Um, as far as Seneca goes, their rushing attack hasn't been quite as successful as Eisenhower's. They're minus 10 yards as a team rushing. Uh, Colin Libra is 3 for 11 with 74 yards and a touchdown. However, 63 of those yards were on, and that touchdown were to Nolan Seabury. Uh, they have multiple fumbles and they lost one of those. Okay, so the first half stats were brought to you by Wilcox Brothers True Value. Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove, PA is your locally owned hardware store. We're proud to be a member of the True Value family and we're here to serve our community. Whether you're a pro or taking on a DIY home improvement project for the first time, we're right here in your neighborhood with Ladies the expert and advice, the tools, equipment, and the products you need to get the job done. Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove, PA, we're here to help. Come in and see us today. Color guard instructors are Kylie Wilsey and Megan Hitchcock. Percussion instructor is Keegan McCray. Yeah, and now we're going to take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. The out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. Filling. Cody, what do we got this today? Our uh, last update season. that we got, Reynolds is 35, Kennedy Catholic 0, West Middlesex 7, Mercer 0, Farrell is 28, Greenville 0, Wilmington 28, Sharpsville 0, Lakeview leads Maplewood 15 to 8, Cochranton and Northwestern are still stuck at 0, Cambridge Springs 14, Sagertown 0, Iroquois 13, Union City 8, Corey 7, and Northeast 7. Harbor, que Harbor Creek has a 13-0 lead over General McLean. Meadville is dominating Titusville 41-0, and McDowell 14, Cathedral Prep 7. Okay, and that look at the out-of-town scoreboard was brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. Swift Kennedy and Company in Dubois is an independent property and casualty insurance agency and the official insurance agency of D9 and 10 Sports.com. Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company. Insurance with integrity since 1921. Here, the Eisenhower Knights Marching Band. Do want to let you know that tonight's game stream is being brought to you by the Computer Guru of Leaper. When you need computer repairs or service, call the Computer Guru of Leaper at 814 744 7580.
welcome back to the BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove Halftime Show. Looking to outfit your team with a quick turnaround time? Then give BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove a try. At BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove, we believe businesses, individuals, and teams should be able to represent themselves at a reasonable price. We have access to thousands of different products like hats, polos, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, and more from your favorite brand. BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove can be reached at 814-849-7325 or check them out online at brookvilleglove.com and like them on Facebook. Uh, Cody, uh, why don't you run down the uh, scoring summary from the first half of tonight's game. Yeah, thanks Brian. A little recap. Uh, Eisenhower came out how we expected him to. Trumbull hit Caleb Robinault for 37 yards to go up 7-0 early in the game. And then they would double down on that when Trumbull was able to hit Derek Childs for an 11-yard touchdown pass. They were up 14-0, and we thought that Eisenhower was going to run away with it. When Colin Libra connected with Bo Barber for a 63-yard touchdown pass. Unfortunately for Seneca, they went for the two-point conversion and failed. That kept the score at 14-6. After that, it was all Eisenhower. Benji Bauer had a 48-yard kick return off of an onside kick. That put the Knights up 21 to six. Trumbull hit Dylan Benson for 12 yards to go up 28 to six. And then it was Cale Black with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. One a 24, 24 yard run and the other an 11 yard run. That put the score at 42 to six in the first half. Okay, and this scoring summary was brought to you tonight by All-American Awards and Engraving. When D9and10sports.com's own Chris Rossetti first met Jim Carroll of All-American Awards and Engraving in Shippenville in 2006, the company was just getting started. Since then, it has grown into the area's premier shop for embroidery, screen printing, and engraving to graphic design and personalized gift ideas. And with a brand new expansion to its building on Route 322 in Shippenville, things continue to grow. But at the heart of it is Jim and the fact that services are built around the needs of the customers. All-American Awards and Engraving offer a huge selection of apparel, trophies, and awards to help its customers find that perfect item every time. As they say, they will put almost anything on almost everything. So call them today at 814-782-6264 or check them out at allamericanhq.com.
So, Cody, we got about two minutes left before the uh, start of the second half here at Eisenhower High School, where the Knights lead Seneca 42-6 to in a District 10 Region 5 contest. And, uh, Cody, what are your keys to the second half tonight? Well, we'll start with the away team. Seneca, uh, they're down 42-6. to there, There's not much you're going to do uh, outside of some real miracles to bounce back and, and win this game. Right now, it's it, they're kind of at a point of safe face, uh, establish some things on offense, and, and uh, have the defense step up to contain Eisenhower's running game that they, they really have went hard with in the second, second quarter. Uh, so for Seneca, I look for them to go to the air some more. Uh, with negative yards rushing, I don't see anything positive coming from trying to establish a running game. Uh, and they have had open passing lanes but drop balls. On the Eisenhower end of things, they need to clean up the penalties. Keep doing what they're doing, but the penalties uh, are definitely a problem, especially when they're if they're later in the season playing some uh, some tougher opponents. I know that uh, Coach Penley is not going to want to be having that in uh, playoff football. And Cody's Keys to the second half are brought to you tonight by the Bucket Cafe. Need some pizza and wings to go with the game? Then head to the Bucket Cafe at 14 Main Street in Sugar Grove. Great food, great staff, and great prices. The Bucket now offers online ordering as well. Check them out on Facebook or call 814-489-5000. And tonight's live game stream is brought to you by the Computer Guru of Leaper. When you need computer repairs or service, call the Computer Guru of Leaper at 814-744-7580. And we are about 20 seconds away here from the second half. Uh, this presentation of high school football on D9and10sports.com. It's powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters. And we do want to thank all of our sponsors for tonight's broadcast. Uh, they make it possible to for us to bring these games to you every week, Cody. All right, folks, we're back for our second half of football here. We start with the Knights leading 42 to six. The Knights will be receiving the second half kickoff. So getting ready to start the second half. Eisenhower a will receive the to settle uh, in second here. half kickoff. Uh, looks like Robinault's gonna be back deep. Chili and moist. And that is to number to that 21, ball. Logan Kibbe getting ready to we kick off. Benson back. And Kibbe Flanked kicks it. Alexander. Benson feels it, drops it. Robinho's got the ball. Out. Makes a nice move up the middle. Brings and the he ball gets back. out oh, just out yard across the 40-yard line. Yard line. Where it will be spotted for the Knights at first and, and 10. And that's where Eisenhower will take over here to start the second half. You know, and you got to wonder, Cody, with a 42 to six lead, uh, how many, how much longer are we going to see some of these Eisenhower starters in the game? You know, I was just thinking that, Brian. We're going to have to be looking at those uh, roster sheets quite a bit. I think here in the second half, I expect a lot of the, a lot of the depth to get on the field and get some experience. Okay, here we go. Trumbull breaks the huddle. Eisenhower first and ten on their own 42 yard line. Trumbull in the gun, black to his right. Three receivers to the near side here. Black and, and Trumbull fakes the handoff, fakes. has some pressure, he gets away, Trumbull gets between a pair of defenders, defenders, makes another man miss, another gets away from another he tackle, he is down the, the right sideline, oh and Trumbull goes 58 four. yards the for the Eisenhower the touchdown. The Eisenhower What a nifty little run there by Eisenhower. Made about four different guys miss. One got to the sideline and then was off to the races. Yeah, and it looked like a broken pass play. All the way uh, in. Eisenhower certainly coming out aggressive despite the lead. Okay, so Venman getting ready to set, attempt the point after here. Trumbull to hold. Snap is good, hold is down, kick is up, kick and is good. good. So Eisenhower Jake with 11 minutes, 11 seconds to go to here in the third quarter, leads Seneca 49-6, to six. and that touchdown was brought to you by KC Auto Glass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Auto Glass. That took all 49 seconds off. So one play, 58 yards for uh, Owen Trumbull there on the run. run and Eisenhower Owen extends Trumbull. the lead now, 49-6 to six over Seneca. Yeah, Brian, that was Trumbull's fifth carry for the night, and he's creeping up on 100 yards himself. And we've already got Kale Black over 100 yards in the first half. 
Uh, Eisenhower well on its way to a, a second 100-yard rusher, but again, we'll see if the starters come back out uh, for Eisenhower's next possession. That Penley's nice. He'll let Trumbull hit the 100-yard mark. <laughs> okay. Eisenhower getting ready to kick off here. All right. Ball's keyed up here. Benman going to kick it for the Knights. And he pushes it down, bounces over. That is Buscemi. Number two. Tries to turn the corner, but then is pushed out of bounds at the 29 yard line for Seneca. You know, Cody, we asked how much longer we're going to see the starters, and uh, you look down on the sideline, and uh, you see uh, Garrett Jensen down there starting to warm up a little bit. So, uh, it might be. Uh, might be nights over here for uh, for Owen Trumbull at quarterback. Well, it's not a bad way to, to end a night, though. Uh, not hitting the 100-yard mark. I'm sure he's okay with that. They're <laughs> looking like they're going to get the W. Yeah. So Seneca takes over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. Lieber fakes the handoff, quarterback trying to get the corner, the gets up. Robinaugh comes up Stay and does finally bring nicely. him down. Uh, but Lieber does get outside he's across the 35 to the 37-yard line. He's got about eight yards on that. It's going to be a second and short two. now for the Bobcats. Lieber utilizing that speed, that quickness that we talked about to get around the end, and that's all that play was. He was just he was faster than the defensive line, and it wasn't until the back seven got up to him that he was stopped. A nice open field tackle by Caleb Robinaud there. Uh, making sure he, he hit and wrapped up and, and held on and brought Lieber down. So second and two now for the Bobcats on their own 37. They trail Eisenhower 49-6 to six with just under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Quarterback, and Lieber's going to keep it again. And he's nice right there. under he's lots of pressure. He lost the ball. Beers ripped the ball out. But it's no, they're going to say he was down. Jared Down before Beers got the ball out, but it is another tackle for loss for the Eisenhower defense. Okay, so third and seven now for the Bobcats. Loss of about five on that play. Lieber comes out with an empty backfield. Three receivers, far side, two to the near side. Looking for a quick throw to Seabury. He tried to get away from Rovinol. Excuse right me, Benson. Benson got just enough Gets of him, him the to get him down. So it will be fourth down for Seneca. No gain on that play at all. Eight forty-five here left here to go in the third quarter. Fourth and seven. Seneca's got a fourth down. Alexander Seneca has a ball back, back to receive what they presume yards. will be the Seneca punt. <laughs> They're setting up to punt. Zane Alexander Kibbe back, back behind nice. Libra. Libra shifts. Kibby takes the snack. Gets Ooh, the kick away. A low kick. kick. Alexander, <laughs> he thought about it. He thought about pulling that one up and then lets it go. And Seneca down to the at the uh, Eisenhower 34-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Yeah, Brian, I think that ball might have been tipped at the, so at the line of scrimmage there. And Alexander, man, he had his eyes on it. And he he saw an opportunity, but smart football, big lead. Looks like we've got some new offensive and, uh, players coming in for the night. That here. is the end of the night here for Owen Trumbull. He's got his helmet off on the sideline, so... We have a fresh crop of Knights here in for their second possession of the second half. Let's see who we're going to have under center here. Uh, looks like Garrett Jensen's in there to take the snaps. Uh, Stephen Riley and Benji Bauer in the backfield. Riley looks like fullback, Jensen Bauer, in the quarterback, Stephen Riley in a fullback. And Benji they give it to Bauer, Bauer up the middle, the tries ball. to break away, he gets back, back to the line, right maybe a yard. On that carry, 
Well, you know, Cody, one of the things about the way Eisenhower has won these games is that guys like Jensen and Riley and Bauer are getting significant snaps in the second half of these games. Yeah, and that's going to be key later in the season when they play some tougher opponents, guys are beat up, they're a little worn out. Uh, being able to, to backfill those positions and give us give a starting player a, a break for a player two uh, really gives Penley an advantage. Second and nine now. Jensen under center gives it to Bauer off the left side. Gets out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Going to bring up a third and short for Eisenhower. And there you see, like, you know, we saw a, a little bit of Bauer's speed on that uh, kickoff return. And now you see some of his shifting is getting through the line there and trying to evade some tackles. Bauer's absolutely a different type of runner than Kale Black, but potentially just as dangerous. Okay, so third and four now for Younger Eisenhower still the ball for Jensen. Jensen under center, Riley at fullback. The pitch is to Bowery, he drops the ball, the ball picks it up, no, falls it up. forward, gets out to the 44, 43 yard line. Fourth and really short for the Knights. to about the 44 yard line. It's Still going to be a yard short for the Knights, maybe a little less of a yard actually. And, and you can see, see as we look a, around at the fog, lights here, there is a here. fog rolling in, so maybe some uh, extra moisture getting on that ball make it a little tough to handle. Uh, yeah, he just dropped the ball, but he got lucky on the bounce. It bounced right back well, up into his like running path, and he was able to get cool, positive right? yards. Okay, so it looks like hey, the Knights are going to go center. for it. Jensen well, gives to Bauer up the middle. I don't know. It will depend on the spot, and they give him the first down. He gets out to the 45. Just enough for the first down is Benji Bauer. Good push by the offensive line there, and that's just enough for a first down. So Eisenhower keeps the drive alive, first and 10 from their own 45. They lead Seneca 49 to 6, 525 to go here in the third quarter. And Jensen fakes, throws it, looking for, who is that, number 30, Mike Jones, just out of his reach. We'll bring up a second and ten for Eisenhower. guess I would be remiss if I didn't say a big thank you to our chain crew over there. You guys are doing a nice job tonight. Thank you, guys. And that's, that's one of those plays, Cody, where you, you see a little bit of that inexperience. Uh, you know, Jensen had Jones wide open in the flat and uh, just put it up a little too high. Thank you as well. Yeah, these are the opportunities for these younger guys, these backups, to get out there and work those things out, get used Thanks to so catching those open, open field tickets. passes. Get off to Riley up the middle. He's got some space. He's still going. Riley gets all the way down to the Seneca 37-yard line. Big run for Stephen Riley. Puts him in Seneca territory. I'll tell you, I did visit that concession stand at halftime there. Uh oh, boy. Folks, you get over there. Thanks to everyone who's helping with that. Just about four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Eisenhower leading 49 to 6. Driving now, they have a first and 10 on the Seneca 37. yard line here. Jensen gives to Bauer off the right side. He's got space, splits the defense. Bauer is gone. 37 yard touchdown for Benji Bauer. 3.50 to go here in the third quarter. And again, there's that speed from Bauer, Cody. Yeah, as soon as he got past the defensive line and into the secondary, he was gone. Nobody was catching up to him. The Knights are up over 50 points here tonight. So, Venman in to attempt the extra point here. Owen Trumbull's going to hold. So not exactly the full rest of the half off for Owen Trumbull. He's got to come out and hold for the extra points Still here. Still keeping those special kick teams up. dreams alive. The kick, is, kick is up and good for Jake Jay Benjamin. Benjamin. Once again. That makes it 56 to 6. Eisenhower leads Seneca with 3.50 to go here in the third quarter. And that touchdown was brought to you by Casey Auto Glass. And you can clearly see your way to the end zone with windshield repair by Casey Auto Glass.
Brian, maybe one of the reasons that they kept Trumbull in for this, uh, the extra point, Venden's eight for eight. And, uh, you know, everything going right, one of the overlooked things is extra points in high school football. So keeping him perfect, I'm sure, is uh, a highlight for him tonight. Well, and, you know, mid-game, you don't want to be trying to switch your special teams around. That's not something you generally practice throughout the week. So I assume we're going to see those, you know, the, the kickoff team, the, the point after team, punt team if they need a punt return, things like that. Those things will probably stay primarily the same as the game progresses here. Question is, do we see a fake out of these guys? <laughs> uh, and as we say, special teams will say the same. We have Darren Glotz in for the kickoff for Eisenhower in place of the then men. And he kicks it down. Oh, and it gets through Buscemi's hands. He picks it up, gets away from a man, has some space on the sideline, then finally gets locked out of bounds at the 30-yard line, where Seneca will take over 3.43 to go here in the third quarter. Seneca's got the ball. They're spotting it right about on the 30-yard line. You know, we saw this a little bit last week when uh, Eisenhower had the big lead in the second half over Iroquois. They brought Glotz in to handle some of the kickoff duties. That gives your kicker a little bit of a rest. Uh, not wears out his, doesn't wear out his leg. Plus, you're going to have to have a kicker in the future as well. So, first down here for Seneca on their own 30-yard line. They trail 56 to 6 here with 3:30 to go in the third quarter. We do have a running clock. And Libra freaks a handoff. He's got a man. That pass is complete out to the 40-yard line. Jared Lorai out to the 40. That's a first down for Seneca. And again, Cody, this is something. They've had these plays almost all night. They just haven't been able to complete them like they did there. Yeah, those lanes were out there even when uh, even when the, the Knights had their starting defense on the field. Uh, it's really kind of surprising that they haven't taken advantage of that a little bit more. But well, it does look like a lot of the starters are still in on defense. There's, you know, there's a lot of pride here uh, for Eisenhower. On defense, they want to they want to keep these teams out of the end zone for as long as possible. But that is a first down for Seneca. They're on their own 41 yard line, 2:54 to go, third quarter. Lieber takes a snap, fakes, tries to get away but cannot. Got away from one man but could not escape. Colby Hag gets a sack for Eisenhower and that backs him up all the way to the 34 yard line, a seven yard loss on that play. You know, and again, the, the sacks, the tackles for loss, those are things that the Eisenhower defense didn't have the last couple of years and they are certainly making up for it this season. Oh, it's a difference maker, because uh, not every game that you play or less is key. Oh, Lieber fakes a handoff, gets away, but now he's Swarm gets up to the 35. There were a pair of Knights back in the backfield and almost looked like they ran into each other. beers on them there eventually. But that's still gonna bring up a third and long. That's a loud plumbing, heating, and air conditioning third and long. When you get back up, so Lauk's like plumbing, heating, and air conditioning and get you moving again. Third and 16 for Seneca from their own 35-yard line. They trail here, 130 to go in the third quarter. It's 56 to six. Eisenhower the with the lead the in this quarter, District 10 here. Region 5 contest. You are listening to High School Football on D9and10Sports.com, powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters. Right, we got quarterback in the backfield. He's got the one man back there with him. And right, Lieber back takes the snap. Looks down the field. Oh, Black right. comes Here to apply some pressure. He gets the throw off. He's got a man, and he oh. makes the catch. That is Ryan Miller. Adjusted to the ball in the air and makes the catch. And the gets a first down for Seneca. Down to the Eisenhower 42-yard line. It's a first down. So that's first and 10 for Seneca from the Eisenhower 42-yard line. Lieber escaped the pressure just long enough to put that ball in the air. Miller makes the adjustment, comes back, makes the catch on his knees, and gives Seneca a big first down. That's one thing about Lieber that I'll say. All night long, the Eisenhower Knights have been in his face, but he has not backed away from it. He's so stepped up. He's tried to get the ball downfield. He's tried to make a play. And that is something, you know, they've, They've lost their first couple of games by lopsided scores, but they have not quit. They've now, scored late in the game. Oh, handoff, handoff to Seabury, escapes one tackle, can't escape 
<laughs> Bauer and Beers. Beers laid a big a hit on No gain on that play. But see, they're thinking it back to the line of scrimmage. So second and 10 for Seneca. There will not be another And that's play the last the play go of the third quarter. quarter. Eisenhower three, leading the Seneca 56 to six. And the third quarter tonight was brought to you by Nolf Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fairmont City. Looking for a new or used car or truck? Then look no further than Nolf Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fairmont City. Nolf's selection of Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram truck brands, coupled with an assortment of used vehicles, provide customers a wide variety of buying options. They have the vehicle you need at the price you can afford. Nolf's service and parts team of highly qualified technicians is focused on providing exceptional service in a timely manner, and its body shop can't be beat. Visit Nolf's online at nolfdodge.com, like them on Facebook, or stop by and see what they have to offer. And tonight's broadcast of high school football on D9N10Sports.com, powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters, is brought to you by Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Need plumbing, heating, or air conditioning services in Western PA? Then call Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning at Clarion today at 814-226-8695. At Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, we believe that a service-oriented business like ours should give you quality right, care and a quick response time. Second and ten for Seneca. Quarterback's got the receiver on the And uh, Libra throws to Miller. It's going to be a loss on the play. The ball, he's got his knee under and that's why we stand on our promise at Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, offering you reliable 24 hour service really to get your job done right when you need it. You can also be found on the web at loudonsplumbing.com. Again, that number is 814 226 8695. And this third and long is brought to you by Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. When you get packed up, call Loudons Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning to get you moving again. Third and about uh, 15 for Seneca from the Eisenhower 47-yard line. Libra empties the backfield. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near. Libra takes a snap. He's got Seabury at the 40. Not going to be enough for the first down. Uh, but does give Seneca some options here. Looks to be right about a fourth and uh, eight. Much more manageable than uh, fourth and 15. Game, but it's gonna, still going to leave about eight yards to go on fourth down for Seneca. Okay, so we'll see if Seneca elects to go for it here. They trail 56 to 6 with 10.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Seneca obviously in a position here where they're going to go for it. Yeah, Lieber empties the backfield, three receivers far side, two to the near side. All the backfield Lieber in the there. gun. Oh, and he gets look, Eisenhower to jump. Here. So that's going to make it even Probably easier somewhat for Seneca. Now going to be a fourth and three instead of a fourth and eight. Yep, the Knights called for encroachment there. And tonight's so fourth quarter is brought to you by Warren Tire Center. Five yards. For all your automotive needs, look no further than three. Warren Tire Center in Warren, PA. From new tire to tire repairs, Pennsylvania State Pulls inspections, wheel alignments yard. and auto detailing, and so much more, there's no reason to go anywhere but Warren Tire Center. With over 40 years Let's serving Warren and surrounding communities, call. it's always a great day at Warren ready. Tire Center. Lever in the gun, three receivers far side, two to the near, tries to get Eisenhower to jump again. They flinched a little but held. And Lieber takes a snap. He's Lieber looking, looking back. deep he's down the sideline. He's got a man oh, just overthrew him. So, Eisenhower so with 9.50 to go, down. Eisenhower Ball takes over on at downs their at their own 35. And again, Cody, the receiver on that play, uh, Jared Laura had a step, but Lieber just couldn't connect. No, he overthrew him by about five yards. Uh, Eisenhower's defensive line jumping off sides on the, the first try there. Uh, that's that's something that teams can take advantage of when you have such when you're facing such an aggressive defense, uh, and, and certainly something that Penley is going to want to focus on in the upcoming weeks. So Eisenhower takes over first and ten, their own 35-yard line. Jensen in at quarterback. He will go under right, center. Stephen Jensen Riley at fullback and Benjamin Bauer dots the eye. Riley. The give is to Bauer off the right side. He's got some space. Nearly broke free again. Gets out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Pick up a six Lindell. there. 
Up to about the 41 yard line there. I think it's in six yards, gonna bring up second down to four. Or excuse me, that was Tucker Lindell in the backfield, 32, not 33. So second and four for right, Eisenhower now. Center. And snap. Jensen Here's gives Lindell to Lindell again. again off the right off side. The right he finds the space, he almost there. broke that one, nice but does get out to the 50, Lindell and that's going to be a first down, down for Eisenhower. The chains a move for the Knights. Clock continues to run here in the fourth quarter. 8.30 to well, go here in the fourth the quarter. Yard line. Nose of the ball on the 50-yard line. It is first down for Eisenhower. They lead Seneca 56-6 to in this District 10 Region 5 contest. That's a fresh jerseys out there now. Jensen under center. Takes a snap. Gives to Lindell off the left side this time. And he gets another five there. yards. Ball advances up over the 45 to about the 44 yard line. Tucker Lindell just getting chunks of yards. But there's a Seneca player down. down so quick timeout while they tend to the uh, injured Bobcat here. They come back, it's going to be second and four for the Knights. you again that uh, you are listening to high school football on d9and10sports.com powered by the eisenhower football boosters tonight's live game stream is brought to you by the computer guru of leaper when you need computer repairs or service call the computer guru of leaper at 814-744-7580 And there is a, an injured Seneca player down on the field. He is being tended to uh, by the Bobcats trainer there. I can't see what number it is or what player it is that's out on the field, but uh, both teams have gone to the sideline taking a knee uh, as they tend to this injured player on the field. You know, Cody, looking back, the uh, the turning point in this game really had to be the uh, the onside kick return for a touchdown by Benji Bauer. Seneca had just cut the lead. It was 14 to nothing. Seneca scores a touchdown, makes it 14 to six. They try the onside kick. Bauer grabs it on the bounce, on the bounces off to the races, and from that point on, it has been all Eisenhower. Yeah, after Seneca's touchdown, they certainly had the momentum. Um, they make a questionable special teams call there. Benji Bauer takes advantage of it. And, um, yeah, the, the Knights have not looked back since. And, and Benji Bauer's continuing to show off his quickness here in the second half as well. You know, and you wonder, Cody, is that, is that something maybe, you know, Don Onhouse, first-year head coach, just trying to, to get something going for his team. They've had a, a couple tough losses out of the gate. Uh, they get some momentum have a chance if they recover that onside kick to maybe tie the ball game up. Is that is that just something where a new coach is trying to light a fire under his team? I think it could be a new coach with uh, uh, some inexperience. Um, also, you know, when you're when you're outmatched a little bit, whether it's at the high school level, college, or even professionally, sometimes teams try to get a little tricky and creative um, to try to keep that momentum in, in, on their side and. and put together some unorthodox scoring drives. And they are still tending to the uh, the injured Bobcat on the field here. You know, Brian, it doesn't matter how creative you get, though. So far, the Bobcats have given up 362 yards rushing. Uh, it's really difficult to win football games when you've given up that much. This is this is something you don't like to see. They they've asked the ambulance to come out onto the field here uh, to help this injured player. Again, we were unable to see you know, what what number that is for Seneca, what player it is that's down. But uh, you know, you just you just hope they're they've asked the ambulance to come out for precautionary reasons and that uh, everything's okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 
no matter what the score is, you don't want to see any kids uh, any kids get hurt, um, especially uh, uh, remaining on the field for a lengthy period of time. So again, we're here at Eisenhower High School where the uh, Knights are hosting the Seneca Bobcats. Uh, there's 8.02 left to play in this game, but uh, you know, right now everybody's just concerned about the uh, injured Seneca player who's down on the field. They brought the stretcher out from the ambulance. So again, we hope this is just for uh, precautionary reasons and, uh, and nothing serious going on. Again, if you're if you're just joining us, uh, we're eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter at Eisenhower uh, High School. Uh, game action has stopped for right now as uh, trainers are and medical personnel are tending to an injured Seneca player. at Eisenhower High School is a uh, young man from Seneca was uh, put on a stretcher and, and go through the ambulance and again you know from all of us here at d 9 and 10sportscom our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to that young man and we, we hope again this is uh, just for precautionary measures and that you know, he's okay.
You can see the the players stretching out a little bit here as they get ready to go back uh, on the field and, and finish off this game. It is. It was very warm today here in Warren County, and uh, chill has moved in. We've seen some fog starting to creep in, and uh, yeah, those, those players certainly want to be uh, aware of, of cramping and, and those kind of issues here late in the game. Oh, absolutely, Brian. Uh, anytime you have an extended break uh, outside of halftime, uh, unplanned extended break, um, it, it can lead to um, potentially more injuries. So. It is key for these guys to get stretched out, get loose. Uh, the officials give them enough time to make sure they're ready to, to finish the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, don't want to don't want to downplay the reason for the break. You know, the young man was, was injured on the field and uh, had to be taken off on a stretcher. So, again, All right. our thoughts well, and prayers are with him and his family. And, uh, we, and again, hope he is okay. Seneca player here. We are going to resume here in the fourth resume quarter at Eisenhower here, High School. Knights leave Seneca, lead Seneca 56 to six. Eight four. minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Second and four for Eisenhower from the Seneca 44. So we got past and the, uh, hands the ball off there. Give is to number two Cole Kellogg up the middle. Gets back. Looks like to Cole's the uh, line of scrimmage there. So it'll be a uh, third and four now for the Knights. Well, we got some really exuberant and, uh, cheerleading for that run. Lots of new faces on the field for the Eisenhower <laughs> offense as uh, Looks like maybe Coach Jim Pennant is really uh, stretching out his, his bench and getting some of these guys some game experience. Offense, move that ball. So third and four now for There's Eisenhower from center. the uh, Seneca 44-yard line. Give us a tucker in down. Up the uh, off the left side. Extra, I believe, in there. No, it's Lindell, Lindell. up to the uh, up 41 to the yard line. line. Be, oh, they gave the ball back. Up to the he 41 is just shy of the first, of the first down. The so another fourth down just here for uh, down. for Eisenhower. And we do have a running clock. There's 6:40 to go here in the game. Eisenhower leads Seneca 56 to six. Uh, and you know, Cody, we haven't really touched on it yet, but uh, you know, it's assuming they finish out these last six minutes with a 50-point lead, uh, Eisenhower's going to move to three and zero in the region, and really now has complete control. They've dominated every game they've played. Pitch to Lindell off the left side. He gets up across the 40 to the 39-yard line, and that is a first down for Eisenhower. So this drive will continue. Ball spotted on the 39-yard line, the clock winds. And you know, though, we're now down under six Eisenhower will be a game ahead. Uh, whoever comes out on top of the Iroquois Union City game tonight. Uh, but not only will it be a game ahead, but they'll have a win against everybody in the region. Oh, it's certainly good momentum for, for Penley going into the second half of the schedule. Okay, so first down, Eisenhower now in Seneca territory. Give us to Lindell off the left side. Tries to pick his way through. Not now much there. there. Looks like he may have actually lost it. He fumbled the ball and Seneca recovers. Seneca has it. Lindell tried to spin away from a defender and apparently on this spin he lost control of the ball and Seneca picks it up. So Seneca with a little something positive here at the end of the game getting a turnover. Defense, and we'll see if they can do anything with it. Defense, well, Brian, that's the that's the defense, importance of getting these younger guys in there, though. Um, you don't ever want to turn the ball over, uh, but when you have a big lead like this, and, and learning from your mistakes uh, is definitely good for Eisenhower's future. Seneca comes out, so, look and make something happen. Lieber's got an empty backfield, two receivers far side, three to the empty near side. Backfield, quarterback back to receive Surveys the defense. Now. And Lieber takes the snap, got the ball, Quick throws it over the middle behind his intended target, Ryan Miller. And, and again, Cody, you know, that's been a common refrain. Miller had a step and uh, Lieber just misfired on the pass. Yeah, he's been off on, he's been off on uh, multiple passes tonight. Um, some of them have 
uh, you could say are catchable. Um, any receivers coach would tell you they're catchable. <laughs> but uh, um, if he was putting these passes all into numbers, uh, Seneca's score certainly wouldn't be what it is right now. So Libra gives it to well, Miller this off. time. He gets well, away Black's from right there, so Kale Black in the backfield. Well, but nice cannot get back to the line of scrimmage as the rest of that nice defense swarms to him. Penley, you know, and they've, they've tried that uh, end around back. run to Miller several times tonight, and I don't think it's gone for positive yardage all night. To see some new numbers out there. Uh, no, it, it hasn't, Brian. Actually, the, the uh, Bobcats together as a rushing unit don't have positive yardage tonight. So 3.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Seneca backed up third and 12 from their own 39 yard line. Lieber back to pass. He's third under pressure, back. gets the pass away. And it is intercepted by Wyatt Lookenhouse. He dropped one earlier in the game. Comes down with this one for Eisenhower. Those were those basketball ups that I was referencing before. Uh, he wasn't dropping that one. Yeah. Lookenhouse gets a chance to uh, make up for the dropped interception early in the game. Secures it this time. Eisenhower takes over. 321 left to go here in the fourth quarter. They lead Seneca 56 to 6. So we've got number seven, Sean Pascuzzi, is in at quarterback. Uh, looks like Lindell's the deep man. Kellogg is in full back. Eisenhower is in the eye, and they give it, give it to Kellogg up the middle. There's no room to Not run for him on that on one. There. The Seneca Bobcats are looking for that. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. There's no gain on the play. Second so and ten. Kellogg gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Second and ten for Eisenhower. Uh, but again, probably the most important thing for the Knights right, right now is just uh, wrapping this game up, getting out of here injury-free and uh, looking ahead to next week. Oh, certainly. Pascuzzi talking to play over there. Pascuzzi under center, Kellogg to full back. Lindell dots snap. the eye, the give is to There's Lindell off the right Lindell. side. Tries to shake away. Tackle. Picks up about three and yards on the play. Way, gets a few yards. So it'll be about third three on and that play. It's seven bring now third from down the 40. And and we are now With under just two under minutes two minutes to, to go here in the fourth quarter. So Eisenhower comes out third and seven, 145 to go. Pascuzzi in at quarterback. Kellogg the fullback. Lindell dots the eye. And the pitch, the pitch is to Lindell, Lindell off the left side. He is yeah, met he is in the met backfield, in the backfield by Ryan Miller. Nowhere to go for Lindell on that play. The Knights go backwards. And that'll bring up fourth and ten. 120 to go. The Knights are going to huddle. They're going to run the play clock down probably as, about as far as they can before they snap this one. I want to tell you tonight's fourth quarter has been brought to you by Warren Tire Center. For all your automotive needs, look no further than Warren Tire Center. Over 40 years serving Warren and surrounding communities, it's always a great day at Warren Tire Center. Pescuzzi gives it to Lindell off the left side, the right side, he gets away from a man. Tries to push forward, but is not going to make it to the first down. So Seneca will take over with 33 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And we do want to thank the computer guru of Leaper for tonight's game stream. When you need computer repairs or service, call the computer guru of Leaper at 814-744-7580. No, the clock just continues and running. the clock is running. We'll see if Seneca, Seneca gets a playoff with 12 seconds to go here. You think they pass, Brian? 
Lieber takes the snap, looking to pass, and it is incomplete. The ball hits the ground, and that will do it. Our final score here from Eisenhower. The Knights take care of Seneca, 56 to six. They move to three and zero on the year. Seneca drops to 0 and 3. Knights will maintain sole possession of first place in District 10, Region 5. And stay tuned for the Rehab Center postgame show. Safely watch out for those critters. The Rehab Center with six conveniently located offices in Brookville, Clarion, and Catania. The Rehab Centers offer a range of chiropractic and rehabilitation treatments. Call them today for an appointment at 724 478. 1501. One number gets you any of the six offices. Like them on Facebook. That's the Rehab Center spelled the old English way with an RE at the end. Hey, I want to say tonight's broadcast of high school football on D9and10sports.com, powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters, has also been brought to you by Swift Kennedy and Company. Swift Kennedy and Company in Dubois is an independent property and casualty insurance agency and the official insurance agency of D9and10sports.com. Founded in 1921 by Patrick J. Swift and Albert D. Kennedy, our success has been built on service and attention to our clients' needs. Our philosophy is service and our hallmark is integrity. Visit Swift Kennedy and Company on the web at swiftkennedyandco.com or call them today at 814-371-5270. Swift Kennedy and Company, insurance with integrity since 1921. And by BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove. Looking to outfit your team with a quick turnaround time? Then give BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove a try. At BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove, we believe businesses, individuals, and teams should be able to represent themselves at a reasonable price. We have access to thousands of different products like hats, polos, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, and more from your favorite brand. BGM Custom Wear by Brookville Glove can be reached at 814-849-7325 or check them out online at brookvilleglove.com and like them on Facebook. And stay tuned to the Rehab Center postgame show. We'll bring you some stats from today's game and we'll be naming the Allegheny Girl of Foxburg Jim Kelly player of the game. Well, Cody, uh, Eisenhower comes in here, comes back home after a week on the road, takes care of business. Uh, and again, the turning point we mentioned was the uh, onside kick return from, from Benji Bauer after Seneca had, had cut it down to a one-score game. Uh, he took that one to the house, and from that point on, it was Eisenhower all the way. They roll on to a 56-6 victory over the Bobcats, move to 3-0 and on the year have sole possession of first place in District 10, Region 5, and Seneca drops to 0-3 on the season. Yeah, Brian, the Knights, uh, the Knights controlled this game uh, basically from start to finish outside of uh, one scoring drive by Seneca, uh, putting up 372 rushing yards. Uh, Trumbull, he was 5 for 8, 90, 90 yards uh, passing with three touchdowns. He had that big rushing touchdown as well. Um, and, and then Caleb Robinall, he hauled in a 37-yarder. Derek Childs, the 11, and Dylan Benson with a 42. Cale Black led the rushing attack with 11 carries for 139 yards and two touchdowns. Okay, so tonight's game stats were brought to you by Wilcox Brother True Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove, your locally owned hardware store. We're proud to be a member of the True Value family, and we're here to serve our community. Whether you're a pro or taking on a DIY home improvement project for the first time, we're right here in your neighborhood with the expert advice, tools, equipment, and the products you need to get the job done. Wilcox Brothers True Value in Sugar Grove, we're here to help. Come in and see us today. So I, I would say after you know going through all those numbers, Cody. Uh, Looks like Owen Trumbull is going to be our Jim Kelly player of the game, powered by the uh, Allegheny Grill of Foxburg. I definitely agree with that. He was attacking him passing, he was attacking him rushing, and, and certainly was the big difference maker. Not to negate anything that uh, the rushing te uh, the running backs did uh, throughout the game, but really this offense today was running through Owen Trumbull. Uh, Owen Trumbull, the Jim Kelly player of the game, powered by the Allegheny Grill of Foxburg. And Brian Hagberg here from D9IntenseSports.com, and I want to take a second to tell you about one of the best restaurants in all of Western Pennsylvania, the Allegheny Grill in Foxburg, PA. With indoor and outdoor dining, you can enjoy prime rib all weekend long, or perhaps it's their full wings served on Thursday wing nights that you're after. 
From celebrating a special occasion to hanging out with family and friends, the Allegheny Grill in Foxburg is a place to be. As they like to say, you will come for the food and stay for the view. Reserve your table today at AlleghenyGrill.com. And uh, as we wrap things up here on the Rehab Center's post-game show, Cody, uh, looking ahead, Eisenhower is going to be on the road again next week. They'll travel to Union City, a team they beat 47-0 in the opening week. Uh, Seneca will take on Iroquois, uh, who they fell to uh, in week one uh, by a pretty lopsided score, 55-33 to, uh, to uh, 33 there. Uh, but again, Cody... Eisenhower right now has everything in front of them. Their destiny is in their control. Yeah, they, there's, there's really their, their game plan hasn't changed much through the first three weeks of this season. Strong defense, stout up front, rushing attack, and Trumbull stepping up when he needs to. Uh, there's no reason that Eisenhower shouldn't repeat over the next three weeks what they did over the last full, uh, three. And with uh, District 10 announcing that they uh, are going to have playoffs, uh, PIAA has announced what the state playoffs will be. Uh, Eisenhower, you, you know, Jim Penley's not going to let them take their eye off the ball and, and take it one week at a time, but uh, they may be looking at hosting a playoff game here in the District 10 playoffs. You know, everything that's happened this year with COVID-19 and everything, boy, that would be such a big thing for, especially for the seniors of this team. I know that uh, they've been through a lot like everybody has. Um, so that'll be the biggest question mark is is if Penley can keep these kids focused over the next three weeks um, to not give up uh, this first place lead. All right, folks. Well, this has been the Rehab Center's post-game show, and we want to thank you for tuning in to this uh, special broadcast of high school football on D9and10sports.com, powered by the Eisenhower Football Boosters. For Cody Elms, this is Brian Hagberg telling you, have a great night and stay safe, everybody.